It's time for Twit This Week in Tech on the eve of the Mobile World Congress. We've got a fantastic panel. We'll talk about new phones, Google's uh, privacy concerns, Microsoft and their Google lighting video, and a whole lot more. Twit is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 342, recorded Sunday, February 26th, 2012. Microsoft can't kern. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Ford, featuring the EcoBoost engine with turbocharger and direct injection. Look for EcoBoost in the 2012 Explorer and Edge, the 2013 Escape, and at Ford.com slash technology. And by GoToMeeting. Get better connected to the people you depend on for success. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com and use the offer code TWIT. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. Use your ID audible underscore com. It's time for Twit this week in tech. Let me press the start button. Did you know that I have a start button for this show? Yeah. Yeah. John C. Dvorak is here. Before. <laughs> From channeldvorak.com. Good to have you in studio once again. Ten hut. Also with us, Gina Smith. This, I feel like it's old home week. It is old. When John left uh, Dvorak on computers, I called Gina and she came in and took your place. Gina I was Smith scared to death. has a new domain she called. Was scared to death. She, she was at the time. Was, I was, was, scared was she to death. shaking? Were you now shaking? Now I'm scared. <laughs> a new domain.net is, uh, is where you have gone with all of your minions, minions including, uh, including Mr. Dvorak. Dvorak. I'm helping her. Are you a minion? Yeah, apparently. I got a great story I'm going to tell you about one of your minions in just a second. I have minions. Everyone has minions. Also joining us, Dan Patterson, formerly of ABC Radio News. Howdy. He is now uh, doing something super cool. He's reinventing journalism as we speak. He's in his new studio. Um, it's kind of uh, how many mics does phone. he have? Well, he's got. He does a show there. Oh, it's a studio. Many unless, shows. Unless those are props. <laughs> yeah. to get him. <laughs> Dan is covering the campaign, but you're you're kind of uh, for, for, on your own. No, I'm not on my own. I mean, I, I started a podcasting company, Leo. It's called uh, CoPoint. And it's, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you're not allowed not like... to do that. Uh, please disconnect him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I mean, I don't have venture capital because I don't need it or want it. But, uh, I, I, I mean, this is a real deal company. You know why? Because uh, podcasting funding... is cheap. Well, it's cheap, and I—I I mean, having a business model, how novel. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> but Dan, you've you know. done some really—you've always done some interesting. When you left ABC News, you were covering uh, the Occupy movement, kind of on your own. You were using Storify, yeah, to tell the story uh, of the Occupy movement, and then uh, you got credentialed and were covering the campaign. You're not in the campaign uh, trail anymore. Uh, you know, I go back and forth, but but yeah, this is the second presidential campaign I've covered. Um, I, and I, I mean, back in 08, 07 and 08, I used you know Twitter very early on. I was in Darfur for a while in 08 wow. and used Twitter and social media to cover uh, the war there. And and this this year, it's really interesting to see the adoption. You know, back in 08, we all had to evangelize these right. social tools, and now you know they're pretty mainstream. You know, now you have so to you're... now you have to tell Rupert. Uh, Rupert, stop tweeting. Yeah, right. No kidding. We're tweeting, Stop, cut it out. <laughs> What's well, great? Yes, press credentials for all. And now, right now, you can you can be on the web and be credentialed uh, and and meet Isn't robot. Isn't that great? Mitt. Isn't that great? Robot Mitt. Robot Mitt. Also here, uh, the man who crowned me president of the internet, and that's going to guarantee you a regular seat on the panel, Mr. Jason Heiner. <laughs> Of techrepublic.com. Yeah, I, mean, I just wanted to say that I love um, the stuff Dan's been doing. I've been following Dan on Twitter for um, a couple years, and we've, we've podcasted oh, before a couple times. So, Isn't it cool? It's really love cool. It. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to see uh, how media is changing dramatically. So here we have, uh, you know, the perfect example of the old school. 
you know when I first got a machine <laughs> and the new school, it had a hand crank. <laughs> so I uh, I had lunch with Tom Anderson. Actually, oh. wait a minute. I have to tell this story uh, like uh, like um, uh, Paul Harvey would tell it. You know. So now you know the rest of the story. But you I can't. Can I have better. to tell it backwards. I should do it. I should do it backwards. Bring it up? Okay. Hello, American. Stand by for news. There you go. Paul Harvey. So he, um, I'm sitting having lunch. He said, you know, I uh, used to work with you before I founded MySpace. Paul Harvey? No, oh, Tom, Anderson. Tom Anderson. I said, really? <laughs> he said, yeah, I was an intern at ZDTV. Oh, sorry. He, wrote, uh, he wrote for Internet Tonight with Michaela and Harriet. But then he said, but even before that, I wrote chapters. What am I hearing? Why are you? What are you doing? I, I, I'm are you trying, insane? I, I, I'm, I'm trying, John, you're here. You don't have to watch the show. You no, can no, actually. I wanted to get to the chat room. <laughs> Sorry, I, I muted you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but before then, he wrote a chapter. He wrote. He wrote for you. Wrote chapters of Dvorak's Guide to Telecommunications. He said Do John won't remember me. I remember him to the minute. Do you, Tom Anderson? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, we both we both wrote for you in the good old days. Right. Isn't that great? And then we yeah, worked for Tech fantastic. TV. And now you're. We now were I'm a minion. TV. A minion. Yeah, I haven't gotten any <laughs> And I'm working with, with Jason Heiner. Which Are you working with Jason as well? well so, kind of, right, Jason? Would you say? Yeah, I work absolutely. For you? Yeah. He's so Jason works minion. for CBS via Tech Republic. CBS Interactive owns Tech I Republic. Cover and you. Consumerization of IT. So. You're writing about the what? I'm writing about consumerization mm. of IT. Holy camoly. Oh, Why is this thing turning off the. People bring in their iPads. It turns and off work. the. Yep. Which is a beat yep. now, apparently. Right, Jason? <laughs> I'm not Absolutely. Doing it's a really important one. A lot of money, you know, at it, it, stake with, uh, you know, enterprise now not controlling um, That's right. the stack as much, okay. right? So Gina's Look, I great didn't work, do right, anything. I'm, yeah, I'm I, killing it. I heard you, I'm killing, Jason. I'm killing, I'm killing. These guys are, t are talking over here. <laughs> Just so you know. Can I get you in the chat room, John? I'm in. I'm getting in the chat room. Okay. <laughs> it's a computer, John. It's a whole new concept. This actually is really nice. This is Dell's uh, MacBook Air clone. clone. Everybody who's doing these ultra mobile PCs is doing it. This is a Dell XPS. That's nice. It's kind of like it's it's aluminum. It's lightweight. It's very thin. It's, it's got probably a big really, screen. real tough. What happens Dell when you drop it? I don't know. Should we try it? Drop it. Yeah, let's try it. Burn let's it, it. Freeze it. No, I won't do that. But it, it's also he'll take mine. It's got a nice little grippy thing. So you try pushing it. I like it. No, it's good. It doesn't slide. Where's the little grippy thing? It's the on bottom. the bottom. It's little. It's called yeah. rubber feet. <laughs> it's got more. No, but I don't have a Mac. Thing. I don't have the Mac. I have something separate. You know, I have a cover that ungrips it. Oh, that's why it's red. That's why it's red, baby. So there is lots to talk about, uh, including right now a breaking story, which has pretty much broken from the uh, Sunday Times of London. Uh, and it's so funny because uh, uh, Reed Wright Webb and others, others have reported on it, saying that it's behind a paywall, and they apparently didn't want to pay the two pounds to read the article. So they're all saying, we, we don't know what they said, but Fox says they said this. This is so bad. I tr Well, no, is. and I was that was my thought also. Uh, I thought, well, what? Just pay two pounds and find out. And I tried, and you saw me do it. I tried to pay two pounds, and it's a mess. Crapped out. Crapped out. I paid it. So they, they got my money. To, so what you're telling me is that Murdoch makes a big stink about this paywall thing. <sighs> you spend the two bucks, of, and you can't even get piece on. Piece of crap. Well, not only that, apparently the... Uh, the story itself is a piece of crap. So here, let me read you what's going on. Fox News summarized the article that says Facebook, using its Facebook app, was reading text messages on your phone and admitted to it, according to Fox News. Furthermore, YouTube can remotely access and operate your smartphone's camera. Mm. Flickr, Badoo, and Yahoo Messenger have access to users' private information. I mean, if this were true, especially the Facebook allegation, it would be a bombshell, a huge story. Uh, and that's why I was trying to get to the bottom of it. My suspicion when I first read this is, eh, I want to read more. I, I wasn't sure that this was exactly... Yeah, you might be good yeah. Well... And, you and then, by Facebook the way, talking about that, accessing other things. Here, get that microphone in your face this here. This is the first thing I always do to one of these machines. Oh, look at that. John's taped over the camera. I always tape over the camera. So you, you're worried about getting uh, spied upon? You, here, anybody wants to spy on John, use my camera. Yeah. It's not taped over. <laughs> John, see that? That's a camera. That's a camera. That's a camera. That's a camera. Oh, but you're in the bathroom when you use that. 
Go on, Leo. Just you're trying to do, you're going to do some. You're, you're in material. So let me talk. Let me talk a little bit about this. Facebook has responded. Ian McKenzie responding on Facebook yep. says another day, another piece of disingenuous reporting that does nothing for journalism and confuses users. And apparently. Uh, he says, we worked with the Sunday Times to explain why the Facebook Android app requests SMS read and write permissions. Here's what we sent them. Facebook is currently running a limited test of mobile features which integrate with SMS functionality. SMS read write is not currently implemented for most users of the mobile app. But as part of this test, we declared the presence of that functionality within the App Store permissions. That's part of Android. If you've ever used an Android phone, you'll get a list of things the phone says yes, this, this app is, wants to do all these things. Right. And what does everyone always do? Say, yeah, whatever. Right. I don't even read them. I mean, this really is a rehash of the, right, we've had this conversation a million times and a long time ago. It's just the, the default permissions that, that we all kind of click, yeah, 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 to. To say that they are reading it is really, this harkens back to the story you did last week about, uh, you know, the, the declining state of tech, quote unquote, journalism, you know. I think it's worse than that. I don't think that this is uh, accidentally bad journalism. I think this is maliciously bad journalism. You think it's maliciously yeah. bad? I mean, I just think this is lazy reporting, but what no. makes you think that this is? I think it's, I think it goes part and parcel with the same uh, sensationalist reporting that sister publication the wall street journal has been doing about privacy i think that this is good copy it sells papers it it, it generates yeah. links and i whether i think that they look at a blind eye to the fact that they may right. or may not be doing this they they write it in such a way that it can't be said that's wrong but they but it's very sensationalistic it's saying they're asking for permission they must be doing it essentially and All I right, think that right. sells papers, but it, but I think that it, it is also scary to people. And I, think it's, it doesn't it, I don't know if anybody's yeah, it scared by it. Like a yeah, I agree with her. Here, right? Yeah. No, in fact, uh, as as uh, as Ian, uh, now I don't I don't know who Ian McKenzie is, but uh, he's writing on uh, on behalf of Facebook. Um, PR journalism. He's he's saying that as far as he can tell. Nobody at the Times looked any farther than what permissions these apps asked for. Now, that's admittedly an issue, and, uh, and part of it is, the, is, a, is actually the fault of Android that in order to, it happens on the iPhone too, in order to do some things that you want to do, you have to, ask, have to ask for broader permissions than you really want. In this case, Facebook said, the features aren't used outside testing. We're testing it with a small number of people who we tell exactly what we're doing, and what we're doing is, te you know, testing things like carrier billing. That's why we need to read and write SMS messages. Um, he says the paper wrote, companies are using smartphone apps to extract, extract vast quantities of private information about users' lives, in some cases reading their text messages and intercepting calls. I, I find it hard to believe that any company would want to intercept anybody's calls. What would you do with that? Depends. How, how would you hire enough people to listen to those to make it worth it? You could target yeah, people. Yeah, I think exactly. that's the real concern. And, and that's what the real business you think, is. Yeah. That's okay, I got a guy that's one of my customers, and he's on the phone all the time, and I can listen to his call, and he happens to be a stockbroker who has some great clients. I'd love to listen to these calls. But I don't think that a big corporation like Google, Facebook, Apple, well, this isn't part of their business model. <laughs> How do you know Let's it's not the part of the stock tips? <laughs> in the executive suite, I'd do it. Have you ever worked for a company where you have not found a guy that's in IT that says, yeah, I got the, I got the payroll right. for everybody that in the company? That does happen. That does it happen. It always happen. happens. Yeah. And you know the if they're doing that, they're doing right. other stuff. And that was the complaint about Dropbox that you weren't allowed to use your own encryption keys. Dropbox knew what your encryption key right. was. Yeah. Uh, that The concern was somebody in the back room would take advantage and of And they this. do. They're bored. Among those it's a boring that boring job. Again, reading from the Sunday London Sunday Times. Among those that admitted reading text messages this weekend was the internet giant Facebook, That's right. which said it was accessing the information as part of a trial to launch its own messaging service, which has already been launched months ago. But companies ranging from Facebook and Apple to small operations run by individuals gain access to the treasury of data when people agree to the terms and conditions of downloading an app. I, well, I mean, this is the business. Uh, I, when yeah, right. Facebook went public, the big, uh, somebody wrote a ridiculous article on one of these blogs out there that said in the Facebook documents that went forth, it didn't 
ever say what business Facebook was in. <laughs> and Facebook said they were in the <laughs> They're in the business of business. And they're spying on us. No, they're in the data yeah. aggregation business. Well, that so is what, what they're, they're in. I mean, I mean it's, the, a, the, it's a hugely profitable. Mm, go ahead, Jason. Selling stock is... Yeah, the, the bigger question is that, you know, on all these apps, the, like you said, both Android and iPhone, we, we've agreed to a lot of these permissions and, and we've given carte blanche to a lot of companies to, to do stuff that a, a lot of us would frankly be uncomfortable um, once we find out it happens. So, I, I mean, it's related, this is related to the path thing and to a certain degree. It's related to some of these other apps that are sort of overstepping their bounds um, in, in some of the things that they're doing. Some, in some cases, they're overstepping the um, permissions. And in other cases, uh, you know, the permissions are there and companies can do a lot of things. And I, th I think we're going to see more things come out where some smart companies are either going to do this sort of on the sly and uh, or they're going to do stuff maliciously uh, that, that, you know, they could eventually monetize, get pull a bunch of data from people uh, that they could eventually monetize in, in lots of different ways. Part of the problem is we don't have yeah. a good solution. Right now, there's two, two ways to do this. One, are the Apple way, which is a company just writes an app. Apple presumably vets it decides whether what it's doing is okay or not, doesn't tell the user, because Apple doesn't have that set of permissions, and just says you're approved or disapproved. The other way is the Android system, where there isn't much oversight, but a software does have to say, this is what I want to do, and that list is given to the user. It, clearly, we have problems with both solutions. Path was the iPhone issue. Uh, this is now the, the, uh, the Facebook Sunday Times issue is an Android issue. What if, now let me just, let me just pose this, this way, I don't think I don't think any of these companies really want anything about you personally, John C. If Dwight. I was if I was but, a stockbroker with some great clients, <laughs> if, they would. What if I were a company creating an internet app, a really cool internet app that I didn't want to charge for? I wanted to have it be ad supported, and in order to make this a viable business proposition, I would need to know what my users were doing so that I could give them appropriate ads. I, mean, which I would need a way to track this. Um, and I would need a way, and I would want, because I'm a responsible business person, some way to notify the user that I'm doing it without overwhelming them, without getting too technical. Um, to make, you know, for instance, when you buy a, a grocery store card at a Safeway store, you know what you're getting. You're giving them personal information in return for lower prices, I right? I refuse to use such cards. Yeah, I know. Me too. Because okay, but that's because you know what you're doing. And, they're look and at some John insurance Dvorak. company's going to get a hold but of you that information that, and bingo. boom, you can make that intelligent you choice. You're eating too much this, cheese. I mean, you're drinking too much this, beer. So. We're not going to. Yeah, everybody here. does this, right, Dan? And so I, I, the question is, I, how am I as a company supposed to create a valid business plan that I don't get attacked by everybody for spying on them? Maybe you shouldn't be spying on them. Well, I can't. Then I can't give you the free service. Well, I, I no, think we as consumers shame, I guess. need to change our expectations. Instead of expecting that companies are going to treat us with any kind of like, I mean, uh, companies, uh, Leo, the path that you just described is is the you know the best intentions are still going to lead us to hell. Exactly. And even though My I may exactly. want to to I have the best intentions at, at heart, uh, it doesn't matter. We as consumers need to change our expectations and not assume that a, a company's motive is not. To make me happy, they they have a profit motive, particularly a public mo uh, company, and and we just need to assume that if we engage in this space, our data will be sold out at one point or another, and and take personal precautions and either not use this stuff or or not assume that our data is being protected. I think a lot of internet users are acting like somebody walks into Safeway saying, "I want those lower prices, but I don't want the card." Right. right. By the way, you get the lower prices without the card. That's yeah. the irony. How do you do that? You just say, I don't have a, I don't have my card. I don't have a card. I don't just have it with me. Or, I forgot or, my number. Or this person behind me, can we use their card? And they swipe their card and they get credited. That's what you do because the insurance companies it's never are had, tracking what you're never buying. had a problem. Oh, that let's not be tinfoil hat. And insurance and companies are not tracking your grocery store card. They want to. <laughs> they want to. Yeah, have you ever been I, think, to, I, I gave a speech with the progressive people once in Cleveland. Holy crap, you go back in the back room with these data guys. Progressive never was it at the time I went there, they weren't an insurance company. They were nothing but a data collection company that did all kinds of schedules so they could say that this guy's has to be charged this much and this guy has to be charged that much because this guy's more dangerous. So, He's got a certain age. So here's the choice then. Here's the here's the choice. You don't get these free apps, you don't get the grocery store cards, you don't use them or you don't get the free deals. 
Or you get the government involved, and then we regulate the hell out of it. Or you educate yourself. No, I don't you think do the something. government it's needs like, to be How involved. does education help? Okay, for, let me give you an example. On March 1st, Google will uh, unveil its unified privacy policy. You know about this, right? So, so there is a way, if you're smart and you look around, that you can go online and through log into every Google account you have, your Gmail, your YouTube, your Google Docs, everything. Uh, follow two or three steps. They're clearly outlined on the Electronic Frontier Foundation site, Leo. And you can clear all that stuff before March 1st. As long as Google doesn't right. save it somehow. Google saves it for 18 months. They, it's not they, clear they claim on the Google dashboard, and, and the EFF has pointed this out, that you can opt out. And I think that that's why I think Google's doing this right. Not everybody's doing that, by the way. But... I think that's pretty good of Google to offer that as a capability. You can only do it until March so 1st. So are you going to do that on everything that you use, so are, every app that you use yeah. from now on? You're defending this in such a way that you're working on something. No, I'm not. I don't want Maybe to know you're aggregating I don't want, <laughs> No, I just uh, I think that there's a couple of things. There's this knee-jerk reaction that people say, oh, but you're getting my stuff. Nobody wants your stuff. Maybe the insurance companies. Nobody really wants your stuff. Advertisers want your stuff. The advertisers want your stuff yep. in aggregate. I think in that's aggregate. in aggregate. They don't care about an ad to, to Leo Laporte. They want to get all of the mid fifties guys in Northern California that's or whatever. Right. They, want they don't care about me. So I, how is that a privacy and uh, you know infraction? Secondly, your your the what your art what people are arguing is going to end up with either European Union style government regulation of this, or you're going to lose all the free stuff that you get. Bye bye to the free services. What free stuff are we going to Facebook lose? Facebook and Google are free. Do you Facebook. use either? Facebook does. Uh, Google, yes, I do. But Google we, makes its money from advertising. It does it. And this whole thing is a bunch of bull crap, by the way, that they're aggregating all this information. All I know is I go and I looked at, look for one product, and for the next three weeks, I keep getting ads so for what? a product that, I would, that, that shows me that it doesn't work. It's a scam. Well, they, they, could, they, they who are they scamming? They're, they're scamming scam the advertisers. Of course. Well, who cares? Let them scam the advertisers. Fine, but they don't need to be bug bugging me about it. You can go I don't them. want to be part of their scam. There it is. Then don't use Google. I don't want to be part of it either. I'd like, okay, I use Scroogle half the time anyway. Scroogle. <laughs> they closed well, that. All back they did? Yeah. Yeah. When did Scroogle get closed? Face, uh, Google disconnected them. Hmm. Yeah. But it all gets well, back to the Target Jason. story, right? A couple a couple weeks right. ago. Target uh, knows yeah. you're they, pregnant, Jason. Target knows that, I, that, I'm, um, uh, that I'm in second trimester, mm -hmm. right? Not just pregnant. Congratulations. So. You, you feel great um, that second trimester, by the way. <laughs> Best part of the whole thing. All the endorphins um, kick in. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so I don't know why you you're know, defending the these is, guys. We're not. I, I'm not defending them. I'm saying that it's increasingly no, part of what we've what we've uh, this tacit agreement that we've made with the services that we're uh, increasingly um, coming to uh, to use. All of us are. Um, so. But you do have the option. I mean, you can be smart about it the ways that Gina and John are talking about, and, and you can, you know, take the tiger by the tail, but it, you're going to be swimming upstream more and more, right? Because everything we do is is being tracked, is being aggregated. You know, big data, which is happening right now, is enabling. We we're, we're sort of have the computing power and the tools to take and, and find in aggregate what you are interested in. That, the interesting thing about that target uh, thing is what one of the things that came out was that they could uh, that I thought was so interesting they were targeting people sending them specific flyers so not they were in even their print media they were printing if they found out you were pregnant for example they sent you a specific flyer for pregnant people um, you know mailer in the mail so you know if they're going if they can if it's that if it's cost effective enough to do that you know, just your target mailer that you got um, essentially was customized now um, if you were in the sort of pregnancy category, then, you, you know, we're only a couple steps away from the sort of targeted advertising that we've all know is coming for, uh, you know, a decade. So, but we're having to make these compromises and we're, the problem is we're tacitly making them, right? And, and it's going to be harder and harder to swim upstream and get away from it. So my question, totally. really, my question is, what is the solution so i want each of you to tell me how we fix this problem starting with you just i don't use facebook no, and no, no i complain I'm, I'm, a lot i'm, not <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I, in, in general I, I i would like to have continue to have these free solutions on the internet and i understand people's desire for privacy you have no you have no solution except i'm going to complain a lot and not use facebook 
Is that your solution? Is that, are you ridiculing me yes. for this? <laughs> <It's> ridiculing you. <laughs> so that's the best you could do? No, I could think about it. I could write think a column. I'll Next. write a column about it. What Dan I, what Patterson, do. what do, you, what do right. we do? What's so, the solution? All right, so let me present. I, I'm not saying that this is necessarily my view, but let me play the devil's advocate here and say. There's somebody behind you sneaking up on you, a guy from Google. <laughs> really, turn around. <laughs> Looks like he's playing games. He's terrifying. <laughs> let, let me let me present a, 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 the, the government argument, right? And, and that is only... I'm not saying this is the best solution. However, the government is is more accountable to us as citizens than a private company is. And and some type of legislation or regulation saying that you need to present this information and needs to be worded clearly to, to people, at least that legislation will in theory come from individuals or, or from legislators. I, I don't think that that is an ideal solution, but I think that, that, that the government is more accountable to us than a company is. Having said that, I like John's solution. I'm going to move to South Dakota, get a dog and a gun. <laughs> All right, so Dan says let the government fix it. Jason, you have a, su a suggestion? Yeah, so I, while I think that I think I don't really like the government sort of getting in this stuff, I think they always screw it up. They're but, about but to, by the way. I'll talk about Lamar Smith's yeah, totally HR 1981. Yeah. It's true, and but I agree with Dan. I think we're I, I think that we're naive to think that this isn't going to happen, right? Um, because citizens, more and more as they sort of realize this stuff is happening, are gonna there's going to be an outcry for it, and this is going to happen. They're going to get involved. Um, I think that the the personal sort of private solution that all of us need to consider is that. You know, we need to look at this the way that a lot of essentially those of us who are you know, in the in the media, um, look at this. Like, you control the message a little bit, right? You control um, the things that you, uh, the places where you have these, um, you, you know, your cards. You control your your public um, uh, stuff that you have out there, and then you have some stuff that you do try to keep private, and you you look at it at the places you know where you can. Facebook, right? You understand the fact that you can that all, all you know Facebook wants to make your stuff public and that there's some stuff you just want to be for only your friend. You know, so some of it is kind of education, but it's just I think people are becoming more and more sophisticated about their understanding of this sort of social world that we live in. Um, the people that did, have been doing social media longer and longer, right? They they start to figure it out naturally. Obviously, the first round people are up there filing their drunken photos all the time. After a while, people sort of start to get it. I, I think we're going to see more informed consumers, and I think that's the way um, that we have to deal with it individually is we sort of have the public persona that they can find and they can see, and, and then we control sort of the private thing, uh, the private stuff that we don't want to put out there. I do personal think, Personal responsibility. Yeah, I do think that, I mean, the, the, the personal solutions that Gina described, the EFF uh, solution, and what John describes getting off Facebook... A, nobody's going to do it, but but B, it puts a lot of the onus on the consumer. Is is that really where the onus belongs? That's where it is, because so what's your solution? That's because of guys like you, Leo. It's my fault. I, I take full responsibility. And it's not just Leo. It's a whole generation of people that don't care about privacy anymore. Why should I care what Target knows about me? Right, a lot of people don't care. Right, and a lot of people don't know. There was a recent uh, a, a recent survey that came out that showed that eighty percent of Facebook users had no idea this data was being collected. So there's a lot of ignorance out <laughs> That's there. That's pretty ignorant. So for <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> there, I, that well, is that is amazing. It's Facebook, right? eighty percent. And wow. try to Doesn't delete your me. Facebook account. It's very. I very know. Difficult. I have done it. I have you done gotta it. You got to get a so, groovy post to find out how to. Do we it. live I, in this age of like no personal responsibility, right? Nobody wants to take responsibility. They want to blame all their problems or all the things on the corporation. Blame it on the government, right? I, I'm just saying yeah. that at some point we're going to have to say people are still responsible for themselves. The governments have responsibilities. Corporations do have responsibilities, but citizens also have responsibilities. Is, it, is, yeah. is, right. is what yeah. Facebook did, I mean, uh, Google's done with their dashboard and the ability to delete uh, item by item your personal information, is that sufficient or do Google, we need... What, the Google thing? Yeah. I, I think that's a great first step, right? I, I mean, I, I, I applaud them for, for doing that. It does give people, it does make it clearer and give you the chance to go in there and, and do it yourself. And, and it's, you know, pretty self-explanatory. It, it's a little complicated. But all in all, um, I, I think that's the kind of thing that we're. I hope we see more of. I'd pre frankly prefer that to a government yeah. law. A law. 
Well, well that's because the government, the government law be some big, thick document with all kinds of weird crap thrown in there. And the next thing you yeah, know, like, you can't walk like across Facebook's the street without getting a ticket. Terms of service right. isn't. I mean, that, that's yeah. the thing. Like, like, yes, legislation is convoluted. I'm not saying government is a perfect solution, but but it at least it is more transparent. And uh oh, no, nope, the government cut him off. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it for you. Oh, dare government. <laughs> And, yeah, the EFF, because um, I was looking around there on, on this other story we were going to talk about, and they said, you know, our advice in 2006 still holds. There are six things you can do to protect your privacy. And I thought, really? I, I thought your privacy was gone. And I went to their site, and uh, this is a lot of work. They say don't put personally identifying information in your search terms ever. That means don't self-Google. Right, this is from 2006. That's, 2006. What's, that's what's so funny but about this. But the EFF published yesterday wow. that all six of these things still apply. Don't use your ISP Wait a minute, though. I have to say, let's start with the first one. All right. Don't put personally identifying information in your search terms. It, it says... It makes sense not to put your search? name, address, and credit card number, but if you search for Parkinson's disease... And Facebook keeps track of it. And then you search Leo Laporte, and then, then, was, then the insurance companies will jack up your rate. So it's pretty hard not to... In fact, we learned that when all these things are hard. We we learned that when uh, an, a supposedly anonymized uh, search information from Ask.com was uh, given to I can't remember who, and a reporter in Florida was able to track down a person from that data. Yes, because if you aggregate your search terms together, they don't need much to find. So, so that, that was a, that's the it. Says thing. easy, not so easy. Not so easy, and it all gets right. harder as their list goes down. They say don't use your ISP's search engine. I don't even know what that means. What's an ISP oh, search? Right. No one uses this is from 2006. No, they still do. Don't use your provider search engine All right, anymore. they still have them. Because it, Google's so much better. Go ahead, keep don't going. Don't log into <laughs> your Give all your information engine. to Google. All right, don't log into your search engine or related. Now, that's relevant. Don't log into your Google Plus or Google account. Yep. Right, so you're not using Google. And then there's a really interesting one that was number By four. By the way, that means that you can't use Gmail, you can't use Gchat. I don't use You Gmail. can't use a lot of free services, right? I don't use You can't use Hotmail, MSN. I don't use Hotmail. Well, don't use Hotmail. You, you also can go and tell them not to um, not to record your history. That's what I do. Sometimes I want to be logged into to Google, um, but I don't want them you know, recording my search history, right? So you can, through the tools that you mentioned, Leo, you can go in there. That's the first tip I would give everybody right here is like, if you are logged into Google um, or Bing, um, go there and uh, tell it not to, to take your search history, to log your search history and, um, you know, try to, to give you all of its information based on um, search history. So right. that's a great place to start. And you got to do it before March 1st. It, when it comes, what happens to, after to March first? March first, the unified Google's... thing goes into effect. And what was so funny is Yahoo I think it'll be even easier after. Day. I think it'll be easier after yeah, it March first, but should. it should be. But Google, or rather Yahoo, announced the same day that they are only going to keep your stuff for three months, as opposed to the eighteen months that Google. Will yeah, keep it's a real your question why Google needs that. to keep it for so long. To be honest, for the government, for aggregating your data for, for the, the government. government, you can go to the Google Transparency Project. Uh, you, yeah, Google, I mean, it doesn't help advertising. No, no, it's for the government. Yes. Yeah, and for the police. Three months, three months would be plenty for advertising. The government's got you nailed. They got the Google data for the last 18 months, and then they have everyone using terabyte hard disk, which means you never do any hard disk maintenance. So everything you've ever done is on your hard disk for the rest of your life. Yeah. Now, the other Step four is block is cookies from your search engine. You That's what iOS that. did automatically, and Google end around it. Yes, right? Google end around it. Yeah. No, I think they actually did. Yeah, I think it's still a scam. Okay. And there's there's more to this than now they say vary but... your IP address. And I thought, okay, <laughs> Can't do that now that it's easy. too much. Now it's too yeah. much. Well, no, it doesn't even matter if you do because if you change it, the IP, the internet the service IS, provider knows exactly know what exactly IP address when you change this. this, is, with the this is, and they is recommend silly. the EFF recommends to use web proxies. What about the Tor network? Stuff. Go into something that slows down everything. You know, the truth is though, Things if you ask to... me, if you're worried about government, I mean, I don't know about if you're worried about Google, but if you're worried about government. Using Tor is basically saying, over here, over here, follow me. I'm doing something private. OCIA, ONSA. Now, 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 this kind of contradicts what you were saying a little while ago, which nobody cares. Now you're saying they're... No, I'm saying, I said, if you're worried about the government, using Tor is a bad idea. If you're worried about Google, maybe okay. No. Google's I don't think Google's in league with the government. If you look oh, at the Oh, Google's Google... in league with the government. Absolutely. Well, then we're it's screwed. Not. Of course I, we are. I, I, Hooray. Let we me adjust that statement a little bit before Google sues me. I do know the CIA has a stake in Facebook, so there you go. Of course they do. They yeah. are They'd investors be crazy in Facebook. Not to. Yeah. 
The CIA has a venture it. arm. I mean, I don't know what it means that they invested it. You can but. go to the Google Transparency mm-hmm. Report and see exactly what law that enforcement means to agencies to to have asked meetings. them to give them. And almost always Google provides Oh, yeah, everybody does. Not just Google. Yeah, but you can, You'd have to be crazy. What are you? Oh, it's a great You're doing story business in the U.S. and you say no? I'm not giving you that subpoena? information. Good Put your luck. mic closer again, complaining. Good luck. Uh, sorry, guys. But uh, right. I, should say, I just yeah. want to clarify one thing I said earlier. It's the web history. That's what Google calls web it history. in there. Right. The web history. Go into right. your um, settings. Clear. You can. There's a thing that says remove all web history mm-hmm. for yourself, and then you can also pause it so that it no longer keeps tracking your web. History. <sighs> yeah. Here's some great news. Removing it pauses it. F- here's some great, great news. Months. The White House has announced a new privacy bill of rights and an agreement not to track. It's over. We solved it. Yeah, that'll do it. No tracking is the ultimate answer. American consumers cannot wait any longer for better privacy rules, so President Obama took the wraps off his administration's framework for new privacy regulations. The White House announced the first product of that framework, the completion of an industry agreement on do not track technology for behavior-based web advertising. It's over. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, Peace is breaking yes, out. Yes, we're happy. Well done. If Bravo. They can just talk Google only into work. using if that they only stuff. did it. No, I, Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and AOL agree. Yeah, they won't do anything. They're, They're going to put everything. Do Not Track into their browsers. you got to remember that Google's ultimate responsibility is to its investors. But no, but, the, is, but they agreed. The government is, a, you know what? The, Unless you're a terrorist. Here's the long term. Here's the long term. Here's the reason what. Google does go along with this because the last thing they want is a DOJ or an FTC investigation. Well, they have so, one. They just got right. one. So they're right. going to go along with anything that the government suggests. And to allow consumers to opt in to do not track is, of course, very good business for all of the above. Yeah, but then mostly because most consumers go, huh? Right. He said, well, that's it. If you've got 80% or 78% of Facebook users saying they're not even aware that data is being isn't used. Isn't this the solution we were asking for? Consum- according to the Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights, consumers have the right to exercise control over what personal data organizations collect and how they use it, right? Right. Consumers have the right to easily understandable information about privacy and security practices, right? We all agree. Yeah, but th- this is a document, this isn't law. No, this is and just promises, and empty promises. These are, this is, this is, these are guidelines. But they agreed. Google, you know, Yahoo. I mean, they had guidelines in your parking yeah. lot over there, they and did. I parked completely illegally because I have no... Oh, you're such a bo- scoff law. Now probably a cop she is, is going to write me a law. ticket. It's Sunday. They don't have cops a, in Petaluma on Sunday. That's what I thought. They have no cops in Petaluma yeah. on Sunday. They're that all, was my yeah. theory. No, they're, they're all, all drunk. drunk. But people will, they're all drunk. <laughs> they're not drunk. <laughs> No. So I mean, that's the, what I was the told. Significance, the significance of this, though, is that, look, it's the executive branch of the government. I mean, they're not necessarily um, jumping right. on top trying to create new laws, but they are saying we're going to take the laws, privacy laws that are in place, and we're going to try to, you know, put pressure on these companies to, you know, act in good faith toward their users. I mean, I think that part of it I like. And do not right. track this is, is not- in Firefox. It's in Chrome. It's in Safari. Yep. You can set a switch. On those browsers, very simple for consumers. And these companies have agreed. I don't see Facebook on this list, but Google, yeah, Yahoo, Facebook, Microsoft, Facebook and AOL have agreed to adhere to this. And I think that that's exactly what we're looking for. It's not a new law. Yep. FTC will enforce this. These companies have agreed. This is the solution. The and I think this is a solution to this topic. I think we should move right, ahead. We're going to move on. Yeah, but I, I just think that's, well, that's the relevant news you know story. We'll we could see. all just true crypt all of our stuff. Oh, that's just a and nobody asking will for trouble. Ever find Why yourself. is it asking for trouble? <laughs> TrueCrypt is great because you TrueCrypt it once, and only you have the password. We're going to talk about that. You die with that. There are conflicting opinions. The tenth and the eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals have conflicting opinions on that matter, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. <laughs> right after this, Gina thing. Smith is here from a new domain dot com. Mm-hmm. And what is Groovy Post? Is that related? Um, well, they're our partner site, and it's not a new domain.com. It's a new domain.net. Dot net. Sorry, thank you. And uh, a new domain.net is the site that John and I are doing together with a bunch of people who bailed from Byte, um, who are freelancers, who I think are in the chat Jerry room. Jerry Pornell. And Jerry's with you, Jerry too. Jerry Pornell yep. is Dr. with Dr. Pornell. Us and, uh, awesome. A, a number of security experts who I... I actually believe are spies, so I won't call them out in the <laughs> chat room. But uh, you know, RSA, I saw out. RSA is in San Francisco next week. How many of you? Are, out we have a pretty good group of people. A number of you are here for RSA. And how many of you work for the CIA? They can't raise their <laughs> oh, hands. I was kidding. But like, you skull, can always like tell them by skull the black and bones, glasses. they're supposed to get up and leave. I believe. 
Aren't they? I think they're supposed to. I don't think If you that. say CIA, they're supposed to just, without a word, just get up and leave. You know, I, I had Eric, my well, little boy. I never heard that one. <laughs> we were, I was with Eric over the summer. They usually start itching. <laughs> we were in front of the White House, and suddenly uh, there were cops on horses who were going, get away, get away, and they were push, pushing us back off. You particularly? Me and every other tourist in front of the what? White House in the summer. Oh, you were in the White House. No, All no, right. no. We were, like, in front of the lawn, and suddenly, out of nowhere, these guys, literally the cavalry, on horses, start pushing us all back. I'm going, what's going on? Well, the guy that I'm with is Todd Moore. He's one of uh, the guys at Anudomain.net. He wrote Tap, Move, Shake, uh, which is a great book, by the way, that, that Wozniak wrote the foreword to. At any rate, we uh, I asked some guy who had the black glasses on and looked so CIA. Was he I talking to, to his him, sleeve? Because that's how you know. He just you know, looked this like really central casting. This guy looks yeah, like CIA. I said to him, what's going on? And he said, in five minutes. He goes, in 4.5 minutes, a helicopter is going to land on the White House lawn and pick up the Obamas. I'm like, really? And he goes, look at your watch. And in 4.5 minutes, <laughs> a helicopter. It was great. I've got pictures on well, it. Well, aren't you glad? Eyes. It would be terrible for like seven minutes or eight minutes. But I mean, yeah. I don't know how we got on this topic. Eventually. The CIA know, yeah. guys at some point. Small. Yeah. Glad, I want it it's to run well. Brain I, I, I'm glad that, that they're I, easy to trigger. I have a funny story. I got kicked out of the White House last spring for when I was there for a press conference, but I won't. Um, oh, I won't wow. Worry. They throw you out? Yeah. Why did they well, throw you out? Sort of. Were you they're, talking in your no, sleeve? No, they were. They are really serious about I mean, I, the security is crazy. I was yeah. going in to um, uh, for a press conference on the um, IT, the smart grid. You know, they're sort yeah. of bringing. Um, and, and so it was really interesting stuff. But I went there. It's the the one um, on Pennsylvania Avenue, the, the check <laughs> that the White check House point. <laughs> that White yeah. House, yeah. That White House. Uh, that was the one over in. There, See, I was thrown out of the Girl Scouts. He was thrown out of the White House. I'm sorry, go ahead. So there's two. <laughs> Here, huh. There's a a security checkpoint there. Well, and I thought that I was, um, you, you know, re I was ready to go in. I was just like, hey, I'm here, you know, I'm, here, I'm ready to <laughs> go in. And uh, and they're, and so they're like, just wait there, we'll buzz you. I'm like, okay, great. So um, I'm standing there. And so I thought she buzzed me in. And so the gate opens and I just walk up to the, to the, uh, um, to the lady behind the glass, you know, and uh, what? And all of a sudden, like I mean, out of nowhere, I never even saw. Like two guys come and they've got me by my elbows, and they're like pulling me back. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Well, they they hadn't buzzed me, and it was a guy that was behind me. I see the guy sort of go behind. He had scanned his badge and opened it and was going in, and so I just kind of walked in with him, not realizing it. I thought they were buzzing <laughs> me in. Man, they took me out to the thing. They were serious. Did they take I mean, you out, and I, beat you. You know, no, they, they took me out and put me back, you know, in, in front of the gate and said, you got to wait here until we buzz you. And uh, I was like, I, I didn't even, like like I said, those guys came out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't even know there were two guys standing yeah, around. Secret so service? They are, they are no joke, yeah, about security on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, and I should have been clear. I said CIA it's, before. It, secret no, service no, is CIA what is we know. Yeah, well. yeah, they but, but, the but didn't, yeah. you know, it's funny because in the old days you could just walk into the White House. Andrew Jackson is very famous for uh, welcoming yeah. people to walk in the White House. In fact, at one point he had a 1,400-pound wheel of cheese in the, <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then he'd have a duel with In the with portico, yeah. and people would come in. They could have a little yeah. cheese. They could talk to the president. They could look around and they could leave, yeah. and there was no Secret Service. That was when he it. got inaugurated. He had the equivalent of of um, you know coolers on the front lawn, just right. Inviting everybody to come and yeah, that's have the way a it should be. I mean, they had snipers <laughs> if on the roof. People, of the White people House. don't believe me. This is the picture of Andrew Jackson and the giant wheel of cheese, and there they are. There are people in the White House eating from a huge wheel of cheese. There they are. In okay. less than two hours, Boy, 1400 I've seen pounds. this show go off the track. <laughs> this is the cake taker. What do you mean go off the track? This is <laughs> That's the right most, there, this is, man. This is totally it's off the track. It's, Talk it's, about government cheese. It's off the track and been spun out and upside down. <laughs> government cheese. And, Andrew Jackson was definitely uh, for consumer rights on the internet, I think. <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Just you, don't challenge him to a duel. I'm just telling You're you, go lose. to picturehistory.com. You can get a high-res image. Of the cheese? Of Andrew Jackson's cheese. I love that site. Huh. You, I never heard of it. Now, Henry's a bit, it, my husband's is so into reading presidential biographies. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm, this was I'm, 1837. I'm this, uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Now, what did you got here, Leo? Wait, a commercial. <laughs> oh, no. A commercial. I did a Ford. We had uh, Steve Martin, the comedian, on uh, on Wednesday. And we, uh, during a triangulation show, which you haven't heard it, go, go listen to it. Don't look at it because Steve's like completely pixelated. But listen. 
And I started a Ford commercial. He went, whoa. <laughs> it was like, I thought he thought we were like Wayne's World. Oh, you have an advertiser? Wow. Wayne's World. <laughs> you got to send you a memo before you do these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Ford. Wow. Wow. This, uh, this show brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, who's really reconsidering their advertising strategy right about now. They are wow. the creators of the fine. <laughs> Unless they like cheese. They might like cheese. The fine eco. Go look for some cheese in the commissary. I bet you, you there's have some. To make common every time I, I slip out stealthily. I know, but and I have every to call time... attention. I know. <laughs> Wide shot of John leaving. Go ahead. Don't leave. Have some cheese. Have some cheese. I'll As check my email and tweet. Check your email. You may you may smoke them if you got them. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Ford, featuring the EcoBoost engine. So here's the issue. Here's. Was he? Did he just do bunny ears? He did. <laughs> Hey, and you know what that means in Europe? That means oh, in the UK? What? That means up yours. If you go to a new domain.net, you, you can see. It has to be this see. way, not this way. Right, if you do it the opposite way, Victor. it means up yours. Victor. And all of us doing this in our pictures in Europe, they're going, what? Why are they all flipping us off, all these Americans? Hey, did you have an ad that you were doing right now? <laughs> Today's show... <laughs> I guess it's my fault. I was the one who brought up the cheese. Today's show is brought to you by Ford. Did I mention that they are the creators of the EcoBoost engine? You can find out more at Ford.com slash technology. Amazing technology they're putting into these cars. A 21st century car company. The EcoBoost engine, the idea is you get the power of a V8 with the economy of a V6. That's the 3.5 liter EcoBoost in the SHO. Now they've got two liter EcoBoosts. Those are four cylinder engines that give you great pickup, great fuel economy. Um, you feel like you're driving a big car. Well, you are because it's in the 2012 Explorer or the 2012 Edge, but you're getting small car economy. In fact, an EPA estimated 28, 28 highway miles per gallon on the 2.0 EcoBoost uh, four-wheel uh, four drive. That's, uh, that's the best in class for large utility vehicles. How do they do it? Well, two technologies. Direct injection, of course. Uh, that produces a cooler down. I'm going to read this copy because I have no idea. You so technical. I was like, you, know, you know this much about cars? Wow. Nothing. I know nothing. I do drive a Ford Mustang, but it's got, a, it's got a V8. It does not have this. I wish it did, actually. It's got a, a, a direct injection produces a cooler, denser charge. It generates more power per drop of fuel. Really? Yes. So it's and then, now sometimes I've been told that, you know, the old turbocharged engines, big turbine, takes a little while to spin up because there's a lot of, you know, momentum in there. And that gave you something we call turbo lag. But this is, they're doing two smaller turbines. Let me, let me play that video again because they show it in here. Two smaller turbines uh, that spin up right away. So there's no lag, but you get a huge amount of torque. So what a turbine does is it, it, uh, it takes power from the engine's exhaust to spin those turbine wheels, then compresses the air in the cylinder. And that pressurized air, again, significant increase in performance per liter or, or gallon. If if you're if you're here in the U.S., um, so the the 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine now available on the 2012 Explorer and Edge, and next year the 2013 Escape. Actually, it's not next year; it's in the spring. The 2013 Escape will offer 1.6 liter and 2.0 liter EcoBoost engines. Again, great performance and great gas mileage. It's kind of a holy grail. Actually, if John were here, he's the guy who told me about. Um, that one of the goals in engine design, this kind of holy grail, is to get one horse per cubic centimeter. Really? Right? I never knew that. Yeah, that's like, in fact, when he comes back, I'll ask him. And I, he told me this. This this 1.6 liter uh, engine, which is what, 1,600 cc's? Or, I, I don't know. I'll have to ask him. Do the math. But anyway, it's more than one horsepower per cubic centimeter. It's amazing. Um, 365 horsepower in the 3.5 liter V6. Wow. 420 foot-pounds of torque. It's incredible. Um, so take a look at it right now. You just go to Ford.com slash technology. I'm trading in my BMW. Right you should. You know what? You, you, I you really would, should. You would love this. And yeah. you'd love the Ford Sync. And I, Scott Monty and his All the technology. Yeah. Ford have, have yeah. really Scott's made. great. Isn't, Isn't he, he nice? He's really yep. a nice guy, and he makes Ford seem hip. Which It is hip. And it has become so I'll hip. tell you, if you hang out with Alan Mulally, you will see how hip it is. He wears the sweater vest. He looks just like Pat Boone. Ford.com. <laughs> technology. Pat I, I, great. The first time I met Alan, I went. I wore a suit. I thought, I'm meeting the CEO of a Fortune 500, a Fortune 10, whatever, company. I'm going to wear a suit. He's wearing a crew, like a Pat. He looks like Pat Boone. He's got a 
V-neck sweater. Maybe he's thinking the first time I'm going to meet Leo Laporte. It was I'm because gonna look cool. the next time yeah. I wore a V-neck sweater and he wore a suit. Really? I swear to God. Of course. Very confusing. <sighs> you can never be too what, dressed up. What is that? Up. What? J don't let him in. Oh God, we're in trouble. John is at the controls now of the show. Is he? Look at him. Oh no. Okay, John, press uh, press F on the keyboard. That press F. Press F. What does press that do? F. Go ahead. Just see. Look at that. Oh, cool. Flew it right out of there. You let John drive this thing? I, he's never driven it before. I'm very nervous. <laughs> he's figured out how to do that. <laughs> he's got some weird transition. That's oh, look. Funny. Wow. Oh, there's... yeah. There's a bunch of cool transitions here. Oh, dear. And by the way, I'm on. Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Good to see you, John. You can stay there. But, but correct me. Didn't you not tell me once that the Holy Grail of engine design was uh, one horsepower per cubic centimeter? That would be one of them, yeah. It yeah. used to be one per uh, cubic inch. Remember in the olden days right. when you'd have now to put CCs. a cam in the car and right. all these crazy right. things. But, so I ran into these things out here, which is uh, these these kind of – there's a Mad Magazine. There's an autographed Mad. And right, right under it wow. was this. You really smell like dog buns. What is, <laughs> what is the name of your show? For what's this? going on? Right there. We are. We're brainstorming new names for shows, and we thought uh, YRS LDB should be it. Should be it. For sure. You really smell like dog buns. What is that? What is the story of that, by the way? Does anybody know? John, do you know? Chad? Nobody knows. I'm afraid to ask what a dog bun is, but I, I guess I can imagine. Dogs don't it's like have a buns, cow patty. Do they? It's like a cow patty. Dogs don't. Let's move on. And actually, this is a story Gina wrote about in a new domain dot net. Yeah. Uh, pleading the fifth. Now, this is what's interesting on this is there were two decisions from federal court this week. Uh, the tenth and the eleventh circuit court of appeals. The the tenth was a ruling on a Chicago. Uh, a uh, story, I believe, uh, Chicago. It's Colorado. Uh, Colorado, it's that's right. Very the good. The Colorado. Is Ramona something. They let stand a judge's ruling in that case that the defendant in a mortgage fraud case could be compelled to produce the contents of her encrypted laptop. Well, I mean, they can't make her talk. Well, the they could the say password. you go to jail until you right. give us the that's, password. They basically. put you in jail for contempt of court, which is what they overturned in the 11th Circuit. That's so weird. The next day, the 11th Circuit Court of, o court of Appeals overturned a Florida contempt of court charge. Uh, this one was for a child pornography suspect. He refused to decrypt the contents of several hard drives. Yeah, five five laptops. He wouldn't give him his TrueCrypt password. The, the 11th Circuit it was said... True he has the right under the Fifth Amendment not to incriminate himself. So the the real the really interesting question is, if you have an encrypted drive, is giving the police the key in is it is it self incriminating? And one court ruling says yes, the other said no. Well, this will go all the way to the Supreme Court. You can bet. Well, and I think maybe. The yeah. Yeah. Interesting thing here, and Jason, I'm glad you're here because I was going to pitch this as a story for you for tomorrow, <laughs> is there's a whole cool enterprise angle on this is, um, so say I'm a user in a big company and I decide to use TrueCrypt, and if you've ever used TrueCrypt, you know, I mean, nobody can get into this hard drive unless they've got that password, and I encrypt everything, and let's say I break the law, you fire me, and I leave and you take my laptop, IT now not only has no control over what's on your iPad and on Google Docs, they can't get into any of your email or any of the stuff that supposedly belongs to them on company property. Mm. And that, what are the I wonder if that's different here? than self the right to not to self-incriminate. I mean, if they say you don't have to give up your password, that the, that the Fifth Amendment covers... But You're that's right. different. That's not a civil – in the IT case, it would be a civil issue, right. not a legal issue. Right. Not that's a, different. I but I think in different. terms of criminal activity, I actually think that giving your fingerprints is self-incrimination. And courts have ruled that it is not, of course. That it right, is, but fact, it is. You're, you're, you're DNA, incriminating yourself. Same thing. DNA, fingerprints. All uh, self-incrimination. All completely legal. Some would say, not the courts, that that is self-incrimination. That's why I don't think this will I stand. would say it. I'm totally on that side of you that. You understand I'm that you're John. not in the mainstream. I've heard that, yeah, a couple times. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, so does anybody want to talk bucks. about? Uh, first of all, the difference between the tenth, the, the tenth circuit court, and the eleventh circuit. Why did? How can that happen? One court ruled one way, the other the other way. Dan, do you have a thought that, on that? that? That happens fairly frequently, and the way that this will will I, I mean, this could go to the Supreme Court, and that would settle it. I, I don't. I mean, this is going to be a pretty contentious year for the Supreme Court. I don't think they're going to take this, but it it. 
it depends entirely upon how each decision is written and in your particular situation how how your court and uh, i'm using the second person uh, if you are uh it if, if you will rely on this as precedent, it will depend on which one is written and which the discretion of the judge to look at which they want to use as precedent and say, well, this one was written better. This one refers to, to law in a way that seems to, you know, depending on the district or the circuit that you're in. This you Actually, know, it's, it's interesting it all, because uh, yeah. in San Francisco where we have the hippie, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, they've just ruled that when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, <laughs> you are allowed. You're doing more material again. <laughs> uh, but that's, I mean, Leo, that's be that here is more the accurate. <laughs> I mean, that's a that sounds like a joke, but that I mean, it, it really comes down to, well, you know, this piece fits with this piece, and this piece refers to this piece of, of legislation right. and, and precedent. And I mean, it, Tim it really Lee, is going to be... Timothy Lee, uh, who writes the Law and Disorder column for Ars Technica, says the issue is, in fact, there is a slight difference in the two cases. So the cases may be reconcilable, uh, sure. and it has to do uh, with two – When he says, while two rulings reach opposite uh, results, they don't necessarily contradict each other. The results turned – on how much the government knew about the contents of the drive ahead of time. Uh, in previous cases, the courts have held that when the government already knows of the existence of specific incriminating files, they know that that drive contains something that could put you in jail. In that case alone, compelling a suspect to produce them does not violate the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. However, if the government merely suspects it, if it's a fishing expedition... Right. This is one of witch the government hunt. crazy. If it's a witch hunt, loopholes. then the owner of the hard drive is entitled to invoke the fifth. In other words, if if there's no other reason to think that you that to get you in trouble than the revealing of this, then they can't do it. Does that apply? I wonder to DNA and uh, fingerprints. The same kind of yeah. standard. Yeah. Like I can't just take your fingerprints and see if you did something. Well, that's why they. If you watch the, t of course, you don't know how much this actually is real or not. But they always try to get you to hold a cup or something in the. Uh, ah. In the, right. Then you're then you take your teeth. They get you to brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah. brush your teeth. Yeah. Your teeth, your teeth here, he he a cites saliva. a 2006 so. uh, case. A border guard in Vermont examines the contents of a traveler's laptop, and found by file name that several of the files appeared to be child porn. But when the laptop was closed, the portion of the hard drive containing these files was automatically encrypted. Actually, maybe it wasn't the file name. Maybe we actually saw the pictures. They were encrypted after the right. That's how drive was closed. Like yeah. Well, with true encrypted. To Right, yeah, so so if the guy was logged encryption. in and he could see the image, the the border guard saw the image, said "whoa," and he closes it. So why is it. the guy going across a border looking at child porn? Is this guy? What? what how weird is this character? You know, travel can be very lonely. I don't yes, know what I, state he's going the government to. sought to yeah. compel the suspect to decrypt the files again. The court in this 2006 case ruled that because a government agent had already seen the files. It was okay to, to say, you've got to give us the key. Well, this is just like the search and seizure stuff, you know, about the RICO Act, right, which was created That's a uh, to get law. mobsters, right? I know. And so, but now yeah, they use now. the RICO Act against everybody. That's kind of to your point, against John. Against drug dealers. These, these laws get passed with all sorts of... Right, and then they become... Yeah, but with Additional RICO, they stuff. say, okay, well, you know, you have the right for the government not to bash your door down and search your house unless you're a mobster. But now they apply RICO to everything. Unless you're a drug dealer. They Unless can apply Rico to Facebook. Dealer. Unless we think you might I show. cite for you the case of Matt Speccarelli. Matt Speccarelli is a hero for the modern age. Do you know who Matt Speccarelli is? No, but I love Remember his name. Remember this name? He oh, is, God. by the way, watching this show right now. He called me on Saturday. He sent me an email a couple of months ago, said, I am pissed. I have an iPhone. And uh, mm -hmm. I have an unlimited plan. I'm grandfathered in on my unlimited plan. Mm -hmm. I got a message from AT&T saying, you've used... More than the top five percent of our users, we're going to throttle you. What does he do? So I don't mean oh, throttle right. this, you like this. Right. He, this is the. He this is your money. friend. This guy. We got. He won this case. He went to. He, I love this. He went to small claims court. Not. You know, he didn't make a federal case out of it. 
He went to a small <laughs> no claims court intended. where you don't need a lawyer, right? You, right. you bring you, the case In fact, yourself. you can't have a lawyer. He was smart. He called the Associated Press before he, uh, his day in court and said, you might want to be in the courtroom that day. The AP showed up. So did somebody from AT&T, which is unusual because a lot of times Generally the speaking, corporation they, just says, ah, they, screw they it. But AT&T right. takes this fairly seriously. Uh, Matt said, I had a stack, a 30-inch tall stack of documents, including bills and everything, showing what had happened. Um, he said, I was throttled. Uh, I've been watching Netflix. Uh, I used 1.5 gigabytes, according to AT&T's own data calculator. The judge said, first of all, Matt told me this on the radio uh, on Saturday. He said, first the judge said, in this country, we the, the rules get set in small claims court. They get set at the, lo at the most local level. This is where true justice right. happens. In fact, small claims court's a great thing that a lot of people don't take advantage this of. This is where real justice happens. And in this case... It was unfair for AT&T to sell you an unlimited data plan and then, buried in the contract, say we have the right to reduce data speeds if you use too much of this unlimited data. He awarded Matt $850. He said, Matt, how much do you want? And Matt said, well, I, I don't know. And he, he said, well, he, the judge said, well, how much does it cost per gigabyte? Matt said 100 bucks. The uh, AT&T guy said $50. So the judge said, well, we'll split in the middle. Let's say 85, <laughs> which is in the middle, but that's fine. And he gave him 10 85. gigabytes worth or $850. Yeah, we're spoiling. AT&T says we are appealing this. Yeah. I'm I don't sure know. they will because data yeah. throttling is, is huge. Most people are under data throttling plans. People on the East Coast, I, the West Coast. Many I, of I our, got that message yes. two, three days ago. Yep. A lot of us do. It's very common. I would say most of the people watching or listening to our shows have received from AT&T that message, hey, I just got it uh, the other day. You're in the top 5% of users. I wonder if I saved it. I don't think I did. No, I know I did. I took a I screenshot like of it. What are you on the phone all day? Time. Well, this Matt was uh, watching Netflix. And I said, well, Matt, why don't you use Wi-Fi? I said, well, I don't want to, I don't want to watch on my phone. So, but they did. <laughs> did to, in Kindle. his defense, he only used a gig and a half. It's not much. And yeah. they said you have unlimited service. Seems reasonable. Yeah. Switch to Verizon. It's not going to help. They'll do the same thing. You know, in a, in a related uh, case, uh, our good friend Dane Jasper, who runs SonicNet here, uh, at one point offered uh, to some professors who are doing a study on how do you fight congestion. And he said, well, I'll give you some anonymized customer data so you can see. And it, their contention and his contention as well is that, in fact, throttling and caps aren't how you fight congestion. Most of the time, the people who get throttled or capped are not. The data hogs, they, the, the date, the, that's not the problem. They're just people who use it during peak hours. And uh, in, in about 80% of the cases, these people are not the ones you really want to go after. It's ineffective. Dane Jasper then jumps to a conclusion saying, really, all of this throttling and, and, uh, and capping is about keeping, is about preserving, you know, at ts right to sell you television via UVerse or Comcast's right to sell you television uh, via Xfinity, they don't want you watching Netflix. They don't want you using VoIP solutions because... Yeah, well, they're going to have to do something about it uh, yeah. some other way. They are. It doesn't work, you know, it's and it's proven like not to book. work. So now the question is, well, why are you doing it? Well, they, they, you know, when you write a book, they give you an advance, and the whole thing is designed so you will make no money past the advance that you get for the book. You know, It's a profit deal? It's, it's, the, way it always, it's, it's yeah. the way that they make money. They want you to blow through your limits so that you have to pay them. Right. It's oh, just you like think that's it? It's just like a gym. They expect uh, you to scam. go once and never come back. Uh, yet another that's scam. The, the scam plan. show today. It, it is, is a scam, scam show. The whole yeah, world really. is against you. Yeah. I... All right. Uh, let's take a break and come back. I want to talk about Marble World Congress. There's a whole lot more. Barcelona. I was, There's I was some, Are you going to Barcelona? I was robbed in Bar in Barcelona. So was John. They stole his passport. It was Madrid. I was oh. robbed by gypsies. And I, I am was, a gypsy. I was gypsies. Really? Yeah. How do you like it? I was too. And, I and she is, and she is, she is yeah. a gypsy. That's... If you were robbed by a gypsy, would it then be okay to say you were gypped? <laughs> I can say I was gypped, but you oh. can't. Okay. That's how it works. Just, yeah. Just say It's that. considered racist, you know, to say that. That's recent. Well, yes, <laughs> it's recent. In the old days, you could say all sorts of things. <laughs> it's recent. It is really recent. And it's bogus. <laughs> Let's take a break. We're going to come back with more. John C. Dvorak is here. Channel Dvorak, and you, now you're writing for a new domain.net, and you're doing the X3 do thing. Actually, the X3 thing uh, goes over there, and it gets posted. What is the X3 thing? X3show.mevio.com. It's, it's a one of the great shows on the Internet. It's a great show. And there's also the Generation X3. 
Mevio.com, which is a good show of, with uh, millennials versus me. Is Mevio going to stick around for a while? I hope so. <laughs> okay, too. just a question. Yeah. Who said that? Oh, you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was Eileen. Oh, I was worried. Mevio sticks around. I like Mevio. <laughs> no, it's the ears, your ears. My ears. Coming up in uh, just a bit more. So is X3, I went to X3.Mevio.com and no, it gave me X3 something else. X3Show.Mevio.com. Oh, X3Show. We run all of John's show. shows over there in exchange yeah, for you can the right it to your... prostitute his name all over Google+. Yeah, that's what Plus. she does. She prostitutes me. <laughs> yeah. Is this it? Uh, My channel it is loading. Yeah, it should be. It takes a while to load. Yeah, Hacktivist like, News of the Week. I think you have there. Oh, well, where's my pre-roll? Here it is. I'll show you. Isn't that she's, it? She's, yeah, that's it. That's the show. Oh, but you wanted an ad first. I was hoping to get an yeah. ad. I get a piece of that. Wow, what does that sound it like? It often does show an ad for your show. Too. I don't know what happened. Look at Maybe that. The you got a fancy... Stuff. Where do you do that? In your house? Andrew it's him. It's Joe. Andrew no, no, Eisner got... and Joe Engo, and it's a short it's show. It's the same people constantly. Do you go to a studio to do that? Yeah, it's down in the basement of the Amoeba. we got two studios down there. Where's Is that where they do it? Well, you go to Holland? No, it's over here in San Francisco. Oh, that's cool. You, you, you ask these questions knowing the answer. <laughs> I'm leading. Those are, it's called leading, leading questions. questions. Yeah, but they're... Okay. I'm leading... Sir, I say you are leading the witness, sir. Well, this portion of the Twit show brought to you once again by another reluctant advertiser, Citrix, creators of Go To Meeting. Ed Yakabuchi. Ed Yakabuchi. You know, he, he, he poked He's me. He's not there anymore. Do you, you and I were in a car with Ed Yakabuchi. Yeah, we backed into... totaled a car. You totaled a car? No, no, no. That was driving. That was the red herring guy. Is that Tony Perkins? That was Tony Perkins. We totaled somebody a car. was Stu Gaines was on the car. Stu Gaines. Too. We totaled a car with Stu Gaines. We totaled somebody's car. How did you in the total Sands a car? We totaled three cars party. apparently. Well, we were pulling out. We were having Go a hard time driving that night in Vegas. Sorry, I was that. in the back seat. I don't, don't know don't anything about, about it. I was looking at the window, it's... going, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I, well, Who was driving? We don't I believe remember. it was Stu Gaines. No, no, we, we don't, don't remember. remember. We don't, we don't remember, remember who was driving. Yes. But I was in the back seat with Leo when we were going, <laughs> run, run, run. We, we did run. We did run. We, we did run. Off. What do you mean you ran? What kind, of a, what kind of a story is this? We physically ran away from the car. We didn't know what to do. Leo said, what should we do? And I said, we should we'll run. run. <laughs> I'm from Florida. That's what we do in Florida. You ever see a gator eat a dog? I did. Okay. We'll ask you. I did see a gator eat a dog. We'll find out about that in a moment. I'll tell you about that. But first, hey. Did you do that? That was sounded full, 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 full flesh. No, that was me. Oh, thank you, Eileen. She's like, please, go to play. <sighs> Is the Academy Awards on yet? Uh, not yet. Oh, the Oscars. Soon. They're not streaming. What do you think that. is going to win? Okay, let's go Best to the movie. ad first. <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. Best movie. Let's everybody think about that. And while I tell you about Go to Meeting, Go to Meeting from Citrix. Yes, Ed Yakabuchi's former company. He's not there anymore. He actually does like net uh, jets or something like that. No, that company no, no. went out of business. That's gone and too. He's now at a company called Virtual Works, oh. which is designed to help with the consum a consumerization of IT problems. So the cool so thing about Ed is that he was working at IBM and loaned to Microsoft when they started writing NT. And this guy. OS2. Well, he did, he, so it was like a cross trade. Like Microsoft guys went to do OS2, and OS2 guys went to do NT, the idea being that the NT kernel was going to be built into OS2. And he learned how, like, the deepest guts of Windows, and as a result, created Citrix, which is absolutely got the fundamental uh, desktop sharing. In fact, Microsoft licensed it back for RDP and so forth. GoToMeeting is based on this incredible, powerful desktop sharing but it takes it the next level this allows you to do screen sharing and now with hd faces they've also built in video very high quality video when so suddenly meeting, you could turn the sound off on this guy this, suddenly you you're you're in a meeting you're seeing who you're meeting with even though they're all over the world you're getting their body language it's great for sales presentations so you can see as a client you know going for this and the client sees you which is great you got to make that personal connection in sales great for team meetings uh, we started using them for scrums and stand-ups in our Agile. I don't know what that means, but they told me that's what we're doing. It is so beautiful, so clear, so fantastic. you just got to try this. For product reviews and demos, sales presentations, training sessions, those weekly status meetings, go to meeting.com. Now, here's the deal. You can try it free for 30 days, unlimited use, as many meetings as you want, as long as you want. Uh, just go to go to meeting.com and use the offer code TWIT. So go to meeting.com. Click the Try It Free button. It's right here, actually. Yeah, I'll show you. for 30 days. 30 days. Orange button. Click yeah. that. And then all you have to do, uh, you know, their name and address and all that stuff. But then put TWIT in here. Promo code T-W-I-T. And you get 30 days free. And we get credit. And I like that, too. Go to meeting.com. If you've not tried it, you must. And do, even if you have tried it, try the HD faces. It's fantastic. 
Uh, Jason, uh, Dan, Gina, John, you going to Barcelona? Uh, I was robbed last year. So. We wish we were going to Barcelona. I think John left for Barcelona. <laughs> no, John's not going to Barcelona. He thinks the flight is too long. I would love to. I, go ahead, Jason. I'm not going. No, I'm just saying I'm not going, but we've got it covered. You know, our CNET crew has it covered um, really well. Um, Bonnie Cha uh, and crew from, from CNET are, are doing a great job over there, uh, providing some great coverage. Um, Roger Chang. Um, Jessica Dolcourt. Uh, I'm forgetting somebody else, but we've got a couple other people there too. It's so, going to be uh, huge yeah. this year. It's you know, yeah. but we debated Massive. going. It's a, normally it's a big cell phone conference. We debated going and decided maybe next year, and I think we will go next year because it, you know not only are all these new cell phones going to be coming out, but Microsoft is there, and they're going to on uh, Wednesday, on February 29th, Leap Day, they're going to release the consumer preview of Windows 8. At 3 o'clock yep. at 5 in the morning California time. We'll get to see that. Thank Make you for sure that. Make sure you wear your blue and details. yellow leap day well, stuff. You're going to log, log it, you can't. Y y what? Blue and yellow. you got to wear blue and yellow on leap day. You do? Yeah. No, he's making that up. No. <laughs> you can research These are University it. of Florida colors. Why would you wear blue and yellow? Blue and orange, is it? Blue and orange? No, no, that's the Florida colors. Because the John University watched 30 Rock this I've week. Oh, 30 Rock, huh? Yeah. Oh, all right. I missed that part. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that first of all, let's talk about what phones are going to come out. Then I'd love to talk about Windows 8 and Windows on ARM because both of those stories are going to be. And Adobe's announcing Photoshop at uh, midnight. It's if they haven't done it They're doing a new Photoshop really? at the MWC, was, too? Photoshop Mobile oh. and uh, oh. 95 right, right. Google accidentally Why posted the story and blew their embargo. Photoshop. Why all of a sudden oh, companies announcing... The embargo up on that? Oh, yeah, they blew sweet. the embargo. Who, who did? Uh, nine to, I believe it's 9 to 5 Google or 9 to 5 Mac. Somebody 9 to 5 Mac. Up. Is it 9 to 5 yeah. Mac? And it was very funny because they, they ran the story. Here are the, all the details about Photoshop Mobile for the iPad. And then they put a big thing on top of it saying, whoops, sorry. Oh, wait a minute. You're saying it's for the iPad. I believe it is for iOS. Yeah, it's very, very exciting. I mean, it, it, the desktop version of Photoshop is one of the most convoluted applications, like in terms of downloading it and the crap it leaves on your computer. And, and on the iPad, it's so I've been told, it's just going to work. I yeah, I'll bet it's going to be no, it's weak as exciting a, as hell. With that processor, I, it's not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. Well, remember, there's a new iPad coming out in the next couple of weeks. Two of them. Yeah. The rumors All right. too. Now, I don't know. Putting putting these these like prosumer or or professional tools in the hands of everyone who has an iPad, it's incredibly exciting. You know, the amount of people who are talented designers who haven't had access to things like this and and now on on very like inexpensive devices can do things like Photoshop. That's very exciting. It yeah. does lend credence to the idea that we are in a post PC world and that uh, you will yeah. not need a PC. Avid's released a, a very nice video editor for the iPad. I like it a lot. It's it's pretty competitive for even not only with uh, iMovie but with with really desktop apps. Um, I, Microsoft, even though they denied it, I think it's agreed is going to be doing Office on the iPad very soon. Uh, Microsoft yeah. issued a non denial denial. Uh, of the uh, original story. A non-denial denial? Yeah. <laughs> if Mary Jo Foley writes about it quite nicely. We talked about it on Windows Weekly uh, this week. Um, so, in fact, let me let me look up the, the full story so I, I can give you the, the, uh, the details of all of this Microsoft Office for the iPad. Um, the, original, the original leak came from the Daily, and uh, they had pictures, and they the Daily said they were briefed by a Microsoft guy um, and uh, Peter Ha of The Daily, who's trustworthy, said, We didn't fabricate the images. A working version of the app was demoed to us by someone at Microsoft. Microsoft, though, were very clever in their denial. They said, The picture is not of a real Microsoft software product, which would imply maybe it's a fake picture. But in fact, Mary Jo says, after working with Microsoft for years, I know what they're really saying is that's not what it's going to look like. When you cover Microsoft, <laughs> that, that's, that's, the, the, that's the beta yeah. version. That's it. Whenever you cover <laughs> yeah. Microsoft, and any reporters ever covered them knows, you have to ask them the exact precise question or they will say no. So, I mean, you have to say, are you coming out with this version of this product that looks like this and be very detailed and only then Exactly, say because yes. their so denial, they'll is. go around. Yeah, it's exactly. Like all the president's men. So uh, it's pretty clear. Mary Jo believes, and I think this is true, that the Daily is right. There will be an Office 15 for the iPad, very similar to the one for Windows on ARM. 
Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote. They will be Metro, which will be very interesting. If I, Remember, Apple has to still approve this. Um, but I think Apple would be – it's in Apple's interest to get Office Microsoft on Microsoft bailed Apple. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think, is, Apple is Microsoft. In fact, I think Apple's probably going, hey, this is pretty cool. We've got Avid. We've got Photoshop. We've got Office. This iPad, this little toy, this little content consumption device is turning out to be a pretty good uh, computer. It's still that's, a content that's, that's consumption the, device. The, Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, the, I mean, that's that's the excitement that I'm, I'm kind of getting to. That, that You know, if you think three, five, ten years ago, you had to have a, a device that was so expensive and so convoluted that it, it excluded most creative people from, from that marketplace. Now, on a 500 or in two, three years, a $300 device, you, you can put these incredibly powerful tools into everyone's hands. That's, that's exciting. Post-PC means more people can do computing. It's exciting and scary. It's like, you know, the, I don't the think creative note people have been do locked months. out of doing computing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that's a, but, no, I, 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 but I do, John. I, I don't think all creative people have been locked out of computing, but but middle class people and lower income people. I, I, I mean, we can't simply talk to the people who can afford to buy into this. Well, and there are a lot of people, particularly if you think about Africa, if you think about India, the developing markets, there's a ton of creative people who've never seen these devices now we have revolutions being held on sms these devices are not just about the north american market it's about the world and it's about putting powerful devices into the hands of creative and smart people i think we need even, some music behind i was him. just gonna say that was so inspiring i want to i want to buy it right yeah. now where's the flag uh, put some flags up no, no and, but, but i'd go a step i, I, I go a step further you, dan is uh, yeah. the touch interface also makes it more accessible right. Right, if you exactly. can if you can solve totally. the issues of how do we how do we wrap complexity enough so that we can make it touchable but you watch a kid use an ipad it's so intuitive they're immediately do little kids immediately doing stuff with the iPad very comfortably, very easily. So I agree with you. I think that that, that touch is also very, not just the price, but also the interface is very important. More if you can solve those problems. less powerful for power users, right? Don't don't forget, it, it is less powerful for power users. And, you know, and they're not going to get away from the tools they have now, even though they're more complicated and, you know, more sophisticated. But it is more accessible right. to a lot more people. And, right. and there's a lot of value in that. And, and remember that, as, as Jobs said, not everybody needs a truck. So I th and actually, this is a big question for professionals. And, we, we, you know, our editors, uh, people next door doing uh, audio and video editing, uh, people doing high-end music production, they're all using Macs, and they're all asking the question, is Apple going to continue to make tower computers, Mac Pros, with expandability features that we need for high-end work? Because it's very clear that Apple sees the real power of this of this platform the ios platform. i i worked with the my my producer when i was on the first week of the campaign through through new hampshire and iowa i mean he's, he makes movies we were thrown together and didn't know each other he makes movies and and he said his entire industry is moving over to the pc which just blew my yeah. mind and for that exact reason they're concerned they're that apple is with final cut 10 or final cut x that he just said no we're moving to pc it's so weird it's weird. Did you guys see that, that uh, Google lighting video? You probably covered yeah, it. Yeah, horrible week. Google lighting video. Microsoft uh, attacking them. For so this is Microsoft saying that the cloud, the Google cloud, it's the so Google funny. Docs are never going to go anywhere. And they did it somehow by parodying a show that was taken off the air 23 years ago. Moonlighting. 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 But it's they do kind Google of a lighting. bad old reference. Have you seen the video? Yeah. yeah it's, it's not a new demo. Horrible not video. Not I'll show a little bit of that. But let's finish oh, yeah. the conversation before we... Yeah, it's relevant Completely to shift. Yeah. Well, how is it relevant? I do want to remind people that Jason tends to sound like Max Kellerman when he gets worked up. I just want to <laughs> point Max that Kellerman. out. Who's Max Here Kellerman? Yeah. And when he gets excited, he gets sports to, reporter. Oh, he's right. exactly well, like Max Kellerman. It's relevant because you were talking about Office uh, coming on to the iPad and all the things that the Microsoft is doing. And Microsoft in this video is attacking Google for doing a lot of the stuff that Microsoft does, so which is relieving, a, releasing. Here's, the, here's the video. There it is. He's, top of his game. He's got a Google tie on. See, a little white suit. <laughs> Behind a plant. Microsoft makes these videos. They're just bizarre. Yep. I wonder what they pay for.
Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they spend a lot of money, but the, I'm not sure who the audience is for this. First of all, moonlighting. It's mostly for, yeah, the moonlighting right, so reference is pretty it's, pretty tired. It's this that's, guy trying yeah, to talk. Yeah. That's supposed to be Bruce Willis with hair. And this is supposed to be Sybil Shepherd, apparently. Yep. He's trying and to they're talk terrible to actors. using Google Docs. They're probably in house. I'm guessing. I think it's for sales. Yeah, sales guys love this stuff. Yeah. It shows the age of the sales guy making this. This the best yeah, part is. Totally. He's real, he's real yeah. slick. Best part is a little later on. Sixty. When uh, <laughs> so he's trying to sell her Google Docs, right? He's trying to, and, and she's skeptical. She's saying, what? Why would I use an open Different, system like better, that? And he's like, oh, don't worry. Gone. Who knows and, what the future you know, has for Google? You've seen the video. He says, who knows what the future is for Google Apps? And then some guy on a conveyor oh, belt man. with a fog <laughs> machine, because I don't think his legs were moving. I... Dudes who thought out. they were cool in 1987. <laughs> I like the sweater over his shoulders. I like his tie. This is okay. just, I don't This care. is historically bad. I mean, this it is. It is. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you hear what she's saying, where she's look trying to give the Microsoft oh, argument boy. back. You Doesn't you don't it make Microsoft just look like the stupidest down market company well, if it was history? really yeah. funny, it wouldn't. It would work. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. I mean, this is one of those, it takes <laughs> right? one to know one kind of things. Like, <laughs> to like summarize. Microsoft looks at Google, right? And they that, that's why Microsoft thinks Google is its biggest competitor and why they sort of totally took their eye off Apple, right? Is because they look at Mike or Microsoft looks at Google and they see all the stuff Google's doing and they're like, they're doing all the same stuff that we used to do and they're doing it better than we did and um, they're going to burn us. Meanwhile, you know, what they should have been looking at was, you know, Apple sort of undercutting the whole, um, you know, just eating the whole bottom out of the PC market with the iPad. Mm -hmm. And that's what's, you know, really hurt them. You know, John, I don't think this is for the sales team so, because at the end of it, you get a link to whymicrosoftproductivity.com. Oh, no, it's not and, for sales. And a terrible uh, site, which I don't know what the hell no, it could be that for is. It's, it's, it's for somebody other than us. No, if you, if yeah, you, it's it, made to validate business guys. This is a crazy logo. Yes. Is my, why it's, Microsoft logo is some it, horrible it, it font looks like that's somebody not made even this curd up. right. I know. You, you know, the people they were aiming at commercial That's at not are, even curd right. It's not. The okay. kerning the is The W more. and the H do not kern out. But there have been a lot of <laughs> funny not. videos this week. There it's was, a company that, worth billions and billions of dollars, and they can't kern a logo? Give me a break. That commercial is aimed at 50-year-old IT managers who are right now yeah. looking at signing big contracts and getting off of office and signing over to apps. And believe me, yep. every single one I talk to right now is looking at it. I mean, at, wow. at least considering it. I mean, every single one, because it would save them... You know, they would spend a tenth of the amount on Google Apps that they spend, right. you know, for their Microsoft license, licensing on Office. So, uh, and that's the only thing Google markets it on really is is um, is price. That's their main I, I'm, thing. ROI. I'm sorry to interrupt, man. I am so cool with with that exact person watching this and buying into this. And and the more they spend money on these crap products and buy into it, the faster they go out of business and the better for me and everyone else. I mean, please continue to make and watch these videos. <laughs> we enjoy you know, them. You are suffering from wishful thinking. We enjoy I them. So Probably. can I just get back briefly to Mobile World Congress? No. No. Yes. <sighs> Two, one. Okay. Please. Well, so <laughs> Photoshop's just beg you. I just beg you. Windows 8 is being You're announced. not going. Or are you going? No, I'm not going. There, will there be any big phone announcements? Anybody? There's the HTC One. Yes. We're getting ready for that. Yeah. That was significant. Sorry. Go ahead, Leo. So HTC One is a 4.3-inch uh, screen. They have the S, X, and the V. Are you still using that big clunker? I love it. Four, I'm sorry. 4.7-inch hmm. screen. So this is HTC's response to the Galaxy Note, which is, is a 5, 3-inch screen. Is that their Windows uh, Mango phone? No, no. No, no, this is Android. This is their Android. Yeah. Look at it. Well, you, you threw me on that. I'm looking. No, Sorry, no, it's no, Android. They do yeah. have a Android. Mango. It, it, it's but Android. this is Ice Cream Sandwich. It's 4.0. Is this yeah. uh, ice cream sundae or j or Jello or what is the uh, next ice one? Ice cream sandwich. Well, Jelly bean is the next one. This is a 4.0, but sense on top of it, which is the first time we've seen anybody's skin 4.0. Skin. It's LTE for AT and T. It's, it's LTE. The first one. The ice cream has been left out too long. I think this is attractive yeah. because of the screen size, which is a little smaller than the Galaxy Note, but it's bigger than anything else on the market. The other interesting thing is that uh, they the partnered with Dropbox, so all of these phones are going to come with 25 gigs of. Um, uh. Uh, you get 25 gigs drop. That off. explains why box.net slash com announced three days ago that if you have an Android phone 
and you sign up for our, you'll get 50 gigs free. I, it sounded like there was something coming, so that's what it was. They're trying to get people to sign up before Dropbox uh, made this deal. What now? Eileen hosts are all about Android, so she, she should really be. She's the she's Android. Say she ought why to be why don't you send her? She loves going to Spain. I know. Yeah, you I and you Spain. and her. You and she were uh, caught uh, eating churros in Madrid, I believe. <laughs> Churros, indeed. <laughs> he said there were no churros in Madrid, but, but you there proved were. him wrong. I there were churros wrong. in Madrid. And they had this, this weird HTC. chocolate that's like chocolate it's churros. It's like mud. Mm. Huh? Yeah, the chocolate, hot uh, chocolate. What else, Eileen, are we expecting? Or Jason has this something he wanted to say. I, I was going to say, this one, there, there is one reason why this HTC phone is is uh, significant, and that's it, it. It really is an answer as much to their um, HTC Titan 2, which they announced it, which was their big thing that, and that they announced was, at CES. And that's a Windows phone, of course. It's a Windows phone, right? So at CES, their big announcement was a Windows phone, and there were a lot of questions. Is HTC sort of backing off of Android, right? Because um, right. they have gotten crushed by Apple in the courts, and they don't have the deep pockets and, that Samsung does. And by Samsung in the and marketplace. Yeah. That's right. So they, they got crushed by Apple, and that sort of made them kind of reticent, and they've gotten crushed by Motorola at the end of last year. They got crushed by Motorola and Samsung in the market, and um, and they looked like a company that was backing away maybe from Android because Microsoft was giving them apparently some better um, patent protection with um, Windows Mobile or Windows Phone than they were getting with, ah, from Google with Android, right? Mm -hmm. So now this is looking like, okay, they're, they're sort of back in the game. Maybe Google... Um, buying Motorola in a sense and them having access to more patent protection is is sort of letting HTC step forward um, and and really because this looks like the kind of phones we're used to seeing from HTC right they're, they're sort of they had been one of the boldest innovators well, this, um, and the and the leading the leading uh, device maker. Uh, I, I love my note but this makes me want it first of all it's quad core Tegra 3 it is 1280 by 720 on a 4 7 screen which is I think for most people that's a bigger screen than they're used to, but not too big for them. It's just a you know half inch smaller than the uh, Galaxy Note. This is a spectacular. It's really thin. It also important to note that it's not there is not a removable battery from what I understand. Uh, so that's all how these it's thin. Uh, phone manufacturers are going yep. towards that. I like the removable battery in my Galaxy Note. I have five batteries <laughs> now. And I wow. keep them all charged because every hour, on the hour, I put the new battery. It's like it. privacy. It, it's <laughs> enough. The Titan 2, you know, the big Windows mobile phone, that thing had a 16 megapixel camera in it, you know, which is insane for a phone. This one does only have an 8. So um, they haven't put it, but it has the 4.7 inch screen like the Titan 2. So, but they haven't put everything in that they did with the Titan 2. But obviously, this is a pretty this um, is a, sweet device. It's a yeah. very and desirable I, phone. Yeah. It's too bad it's AT&T. They're getting all the good phones now. I don't understand. They, they are. It's true. It's Isn't it T-Mobile? It's T-Mobile. There's a T-Mobile one as well, but that's not the very nice X. That's the oh, X. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's the S. Alas. Yeah. Um, How many phones do people need? Well, they only need one, but they need the right one. And this is the problem. I feel bad for consumers who every three months there's a phone. This new one is like, oh, I want that one. Look at the size of this thing you're carrying. Oh, I love it, though. Don't you is love this? note? Everybody yeah, the has note. That. This is, and see, I put a nice leather case so it looks like I'm a professional. Let's see. Let me unlock Whoa. it for you so you can. Uh, you unlock your phone. I have to unlock it because otherwise John will try to crack it and he'll do it ten times and then it will erase about your everything. Privacy, <laughs> like just hand it over and see here. Oh, John. John, he always he's so. Last time I gave you the same phone, you put to things on my to do list. I'm yeah. all of a sudden I'm calling the mayor. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, T-Mobile wants the FCC to block Verizon's Spectrum deals with the cable industry. T-Mobile wouldn't even exist right now, actually, if the FCC had for sure. allowed that merger. And, you, and Eileen mentioned Dropbox. You know, Windows 8 uh, is building in um, SkyDrive. for SkyDrive. SkyDrive, 25 gigs. 25 gigs. 25 gigs. Yeah, I've got the stuff. Windows on ARM, are we, do we have anything to say about that? We'll see it on Wednesday, the consumer preview. Microsoft clearly trying to get into this tablet race. Too little, too late? Or do they have a, is Windows 8 compelling? No chance. Uh, no chance from um, Dvorak. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I want to be more excited than I am. Uh, Jason Heiner, you think maybe Windows 8 on ARM? I know a lot of business people that are waiting to, to make their tablet, their final strategy, you know, tablet strategy until they see what Microsoft comes up with. So I don't, I'm not sure if they will get it right, right? History says they, they've not done a lot of smart things lately. Um, but I do know that the opportunity is there. If they do get it right, there are a lot of people, especially businesses, 
um, that are waiting to see what they do before they sort of go whole hog on iPad. If they don't get it right, though, then they're toast. Is it Jason? Do you mean buyers like big corporate buyers? Sorry, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean buyers um, in in the in the um, in the corporate market. It, 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 yes. IT, IT, yeah, IT guys, yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, I imagine there's some uh, thinking that we should also wait and see what the iPad 3 holds. Yes, or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I had lunch with somebody from Intel who said, you know, we're not that scared that the tablet's <laughs> going to take over the the PC. I'm like, you're not. That's why they're desperately the trying to create a strategy to get right. Intel chips into mobile devices. Yeah, they're, we're not worried, but just in case. But he oh said, yeah, they've gone know, crazy. Just wanna, in case. Well, yeah, they're they're always the paranoid keyboard. in Silicon Valley anyway. But, but look at look at the numbers. This year, 2011 was the first year that mobile devices outsold um, PCs. Right. Right. This is going to accelerate in dollar amount. Absolutely, we are the post PC in, in era. In yeah, units, uh, right? units. Not, not in dollar amount. Well, no, because but they're so cheaper phones. than PCs. So are phones. You, you say phones have taken over the world. Well, they have. Well, no, I'm counting that. I'm counts just saying, when you guys just don't stop using a desktop computer, then you can. I will listen. Well, that's it. I mean, I, because people uh, still want their uh, big screen. And you'd be surprised how many people come here with iPads now and and keyboards. I think it's nutty. But no, here's, here's I think the though. iPad keyboard gonna, thing is lame. So do I. Here's What's that? The future, though, you're going to take the device, right? You're going to set it down, wireless USB or whatever this thing, and you're going to connect to your right. big screen. That's Same right. thing with tablet. You're going to connect to the big screen. You connect to a laptop. Yeah, that's or, I mean, what a I used keyboard, to think. A mouse. Canonical and, uh, thinks that. You saw that they've released Ubuntu for Android? I did. And the whole yeah. idea is that you put Ubuntu on your Android phone and then connect it to a big screen TV and suddenly... A big screen monitor, and suddenly you've got a phone that is a computer and a phone. Ubuntu.com yep. slash devices slash Android That's if you want to see it. Uh, I, I don't know if this is just kind of nutty, but they do make a good point, which is that you now have in your pocket with a dual or even quad-core phone a whole lot of power that could really be a desktop computer. So maybe, John, I am carrying the desktop computer minus keyboard and and uh, and screen, and I just have to add the... You talk a big game. Well, this is what the Intel Look at the gear said. you got back there. You got like $100,000 worth of computing equipment That's because I'm place. an old fart, and I haven't yet figured no, out... Was, you're just a standard you How to do, uh, do all this with an iPad. That's going to be the computer yeah. of the masses, though, is you're going to take mm -hmm. your phone or your or your tablet, and when you need to sit down and do work, you're going to set it down, and you're going to sit just the way we do at a desktop right now. And, um, and you know, work with your software, all your accounts, all your information's right there, you know? The um, one more, right. one more, and then we're going to take a break. This is from Mobile World Congress. The Galaxy Beam, it is a Galaxy mm -hmm. phone with a Pico projector in it. Never bring that PowerPoint awesome. projector with you anymore. In oh, fact, you don't yeah. need a big screen either, just project it on the sure. wall. Sure. And it must have, like, what, 40 lumens? <laughs> Three? I don't know. With Windows 8, I mean, you're talking about 25 petabytes of storage for your data. I'm interested in the SkyDrive stuff. 25 it's petabytes? No, gigabytes. Like no. They're petabytes. not giving you 25 petabytes. I'd like that. That'd be cool. According to <laughs> use 25. Oh, Just oh, load it up with everything. 25 ever. petabytes? Sky, SkyDrive <laughs> stores 10 petabytes of user data. Hotmail will store Well, that's, store like, total, 100. but that's, that's not all you personally. everybody. No, yeah. no, that's for your account. That's a lot. No, no, it's not for your account. <laughs> Eventually, overall, over the lifetime no, of your account. No, way. 10 petabytes? For money. Do you know how much a petabyte is? Well, yeah. Okay, it's good, a lot. I have a no idea. Terabytes. Yeah, it's a thousand terabytes. <laughs> a thousand terabytes would be a petabyte. Uh, that's why I said storage is cheap. Leo. It's, that's, it's cheap to Microsoft. I don't, I, it I don't know where you got that figure. It came oh, from LiveSide.net, which is a great so website uh, about Microsoft uh, stuff. But I don't know. Vista sucked. Windows 7 is actually really good. We'll I, have to see about Windows 8. If, I'll tell you, if somebody gives me 10 petabytes, I'll take it. Yeah, well, you could actually use it. I might be able to use it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Audible.com. We are, we are blessed. We are blessed with a great panel today, including the fabulous Dan Patterson. Dan, where can we follow uh, your new shows, your podcast network, all of that? What's the website? Well, uh, there will be more information at copoint.com. It's brand Although new. We are, so you have Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's it's about six months old. But, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure you can hear in this room we're still waiting for our acoustical foam to come in. So we're not we're not going to give you anything publicly until we, we zero in on the sound. But uh, copoint.com. C-O-P-O-I-N-T? K-O. It comes oh. from the game of Go, uh, the oldest game in the world. If you uh, A co-fight is a balance back and forth. Uh, co from the Japanese word for mouth. Mouth. Or that, really? yes. No, but that's why they use that in Go because it's a, it's a mouse. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Go is one of the few games that a computer cannot play well. 
That's you, right. Chess is derived from chess, Go. Chess is all over. You know, computers beat us. But Go is so difficult that a computer cannot be made to beat the best or even the somewhat good Go players. Co point. Which is why we called the company I Co like point. It. Yeah, I you, like it. You guys did. So, when, do you have a, d a date that you plan to have this uh, happen? Yeah, I think uh, the first show we're going to do is uh, e-commerce. Uh, we're going after like very like small, small, small slivers of audiences. We don't want, you know, uh, gawker type numbers. We want to own markets, yeah. right? So the first is, it, I mean, much like you, it, narrow casting is right. far more important. I mean, having people care about the content that humans make is more important than getting tons of clicks. I got a term um, so for that, Dan, and I got it from a New York Times article about artisanal foods, like people making beef jerky in Brooklyn. We are artisanal media. We're handmade uh, yes. media. Interesting. So perfect. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good and word for that. We craft it for a specialty audience that it's is never discerning. Ends. Never it... ends. <laughs> yeah. What? The yeah. bull crap. <laughs> Arti Welcome to the artisanal media hour. Uh, this show brought to you by Audible.com. Sure. Audible. We love Audible. Everybody I, loves Audible. Love Audible. Awesome. I'm awesome. not I'm going on a plane flight as soon as this show's over to Seattle. Two hours. I can't wait. Because I will have two hours of the uh, uh, it's a uh, Game of Thrones, no, the second one, the Clash of Kings. I'm trying to finish it before HBO uh, puts out the second series of the Game of Thrones uh, miniseries, and I just it's so great. You put the headphones on, you lean back, and you enter a new world, and that's why audiobooks, I think, are the future in some ways of reading. In fact, when a new book comes out, I look on Audible.com first because that's where I want to. That's what I want to listen to it if I can. It's really the best service, isn't it? Great. Uh, if you go there right now, Audible.com, browse around. There's a hundred thousand titles, and uh, we've got a 30-day free trial. You can get it right now if you go to audiblecom twit 2 and you'll get two books, two free audiobooks. To get two, this is you're signing up for the Platinum Plan. That's two credits a month. Most books are single credit, including big, long books. Did you see they just released uh, Stephen King's The Stand? 47 hours and 56 minutes. 47 that, oh, like, hours? Oh, it's such a great book, too. I downloaded it. It's on my... Uh, who, it's that on, poor, who is the poor guy who had to read that Want to hear Grover Gardner? Poor Grover. Here we go. Let's play a little bit. Sat on number 93, just north of Arnett. Oh, this, this guy's a great. Four Street this. Berg, about 110 miles from Houston. What they have, I just listened to 112263. What do you get paid by the hour for? Um, actually, uh, I know exactly how much. Yeah, I know you paid. would. Well, mm -hmm. What is it? Because they offered me, they asked me if I wanted to do uh, James D. Watson's book, and I just don't have time. Five grand. Five grand for a book? Yeah. Well, what it, about this book? Oh, I, that book. Mike, that would book, well, five grand for an eight or nine hour book, I think. So this would be, you know, about 20, 20 grand. grand. Yeah. Yeah. Reading You're going to read know, it anyway. You know what? These guys are, piece. for the most part, Broadway actors who have some, you know, and a couple extra hours a day to go in and read. That They have the studios there in Newark, and they just go and they read, and they it supplements their income. But they are performers, and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Listen to Craig Wass in 112263. He does such a great job of all the accents. He's got the main accent, the text. Oh, it's just great. Anyway, um, Audible. So here's the deal. Here's a tough challenge. you gotta, you got two credits to figure out how you're going to use those two credits. Go to audible.com. I can tell you there's just stuff in every category. Bestsellers, nonfiction, history. What happened here? Have, uh, Where'd it go? Where'd Jobs it go? Book up there. Jobs book is here. I've yeah. Audible, Your book, Audible I Was, is there. I wasn't even going to mention I Was. <laughs> I Was. Baratunde. There's uh, Baratunde's How to Be Black. He reads it, which is awesome. I've uh, got an Audible recommendation. Yes, please. Um, you know, they have more than just uh, books there, right? They have, uh, they have this great series um, called The Modern Scholar, which is professors basically just oh, um, I didn't know that. Doing, doing their books, you know? So I've got this one here. It's, uh, I know it's probably, it's hard to see there. Anyway, it's, uh, it's called Stranger Than Fiction, The Art of Literary Journalism by Professor uh, William McKean from the University of Florida. It, it sounds a little more highfalutin than what it is. It's basically a, um, a history of, of modern journalism from about... Um, you know, late or early 1800s forward, but he tells it in such a great way. I mean, the guy's a great storyteller. He talks about Mark Twain. He talks about, um, you know, the idea of, of sort of the Wall Street Journal versus sort of the rumor mags, which is what essentially the, uh, um, you know, the early newspapers of the early uh, 
19, uh, 20th century were. And it, it's so parallel to what's happening today, right? You see the story of what's happening today um, and the way we're, we're doing journalism and then the way there's sort of rumor sites, right, versus more traditional media sites. And it, it really is a similar story being told over and over again. But there's a lot on Modern Scholar. If you just look up there, there's awesome stuff. No um, kidding. Stuff. What is it called? Yeah. Jason, Jason, thank you so much because there, there are literally hundreds of these uh, 131 modern scholars, and these are just yeah. basically lectures. Here's grammar and rhetoric, Anglo-Saxon world, uh, six months to change the world at Paris, peace conference of 1919, a history of ancient Rome, aston astronomy, uh, philosophy, the history of Venice. That's well, really, so these are college lectures, basically. Uh, essentially, but they really, they, at least the ones I've gotten, they pick the really good professors. Wow. I mean, they pick the guys you would want to, and, and ladies that you'd want to listen to. Um, and all the ones that I've had, um, it's the professors themselves giving the lectures. That's neat. And uh, they do a great job. And yeah. in this case, the uh, there's an accompanying reference guide. So you've got some, you know, this is. That's a great thank recommendation. You. I didn't thank even you. know about yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. So wow. I yeah. want you to go see, there's the P PDF of this thing. Great. That's cool. So you get, you get additional materials. Is our uh, book on there, Leah? This is from Rutgers. Your book is on Not there. I was. Book. The book you no, and I wrote. No, nobody yeah. ever would read that book. That's a I, silly book. No, I it's think a silly book? What was the name of it? 101 it Computer Answers, right? Or questions. What was the name of our book? Well, you guys don't even remember answers, the name you need of the to book. Know. Well, you know why? 101 Computer Answers You, you Need, need to, know. to Know. Right. We wanted to call it How Do I Get the Dog Hair Out of the Disk Drive, but the but the publisher didn't like that. That's right. The publisher you was publish totally against So immediately, like literally a week after our book comes out, 101 computer answers you need to know. Kim Commando comes out with a book, 1,001 1, computer answers oh. you need she to know. She topped you. She did. So wow. what are you going to buy, 100 or 1,000? 1,000. It was a sad book that was sold. 100 quality. 100 quality, that's right. And it had a <laughs> cute picture of Gina on the front. And a cute picture of you. They had little cartoons. We were driving a little car. Anyway, that's not on Audible. Oh, brother. But <laughs> lots of good stuff is. Go to audible.com slash twit2 and sign up today. You'll get uh, two books absolutely free. Cancel at any time. Those books are yours to keep forever. Audible, we love them. Uh, what were we going to... I had some other things I wanted to talk about. Google to oust Motorola Mobility Chief. Now that they're taking over Motorola, they're firing the CEO. They've got one of their own in there. Oh, they got to do that. Microsoft... Are they firing him or is he leaving? It says... This story uh, from uh, Wired says Google to oust. Yeah, that's strange. That sounds like... Oust. Yeah. I've been trying to figure this out, Pushing actually. Out. I, it's a little unclear whether, um, you know, Sanjay got... Um, Sanjay Jha got pushed out or if, or you if know, he, he just decided walked. to leave. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can make an argument that he did some good things, right, to um, get Motorola turned around and really focused. I mean, he was the one who decided, look, we're, we're only going to do Android. Um, we're, we're not going to try to, you know, go in a hundred different directions. And, and that was a pretty smart move for them. It was a pretty, it was a winning move. And obviously it's what got them bought by Google. Um, so, uh, I, I, my sense is, uh, I just haven't, you know, gotten any good sources on it yet is that he was just ready to, you know, move on. And, and that part of his deal wasn't that he had to stick around for two years, like, right. like there are in a lot of these things. What is germane though, is that somebody from inside Google, Dennis Woodside will be running Motorola mobility and it really? does what people are looking very carefully HTC and and others are looking very carefully to see is is Google going to give Motorola a real advantage in the Android marketplace or do we still have a chance uh, to make Android phones that can compete when the purchase yeah. happens, Larry Dignan is eating it has a good I'm sorry. Larry Dignan of ZDNet has a good piece uh, on this, um, and you know he he really thinks that they're going to be uh, out of the the device business, you know, pretty much uh, per, pretty quickly. You know, the guy he talks about the fact the guy that they're putting in the, in in um, charge is really an advertising guy, right? That that says a lot. Uh, it's not a device guy. Um, Sanjay leaving obviously says a little bit of that as well. Um, I, I think that'd be sad. I think that I think. You know, Motorola becomes the Nexus. Um, it's a boutique, becomes a boutique brand. Motorola becomes the Nexus maker, right. um, and I think that's more likely. But I, probably they're going to cut pretty deep. Yeah. Well, and I think you'd, you'd have a lot of regulatory issues if you suddenly started competing against the other. And it's not in their interest to compete against the other Android manufacturers. Yeah. True. Um, you know what's cool that's going to be announced in Barcelona this week what? is uh, there's a company called Valeo, V A L E O. It's actually a giant component maker for cars. You guys know all about cars. And they're showing a self parking app. Now, why would you want something app? like that? An app that parallel for parks your car. You get out of your car 
and they're working with all these car You get out of your car, and then you run. I've got a video of it. You can look at it. It's the scariest thing. You see this woman it's get called... out of her car, and the car parks. There park you for you. It's called Park for remote. You. Because I could not remember the name. Um, what's Now, remember, Ford has this. A lot of cars have this auto park uh, facility. Well, they're working oh, with they, Ford, but this is, par- this, is not even, this is parallel parking, it looks like. It's parallel parking. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean it looks like uh, not. Now, really, seriously. Out. Are you going to do this? Would anybody do this? Is this nuts? Uh, you only do you this if you get out of the car, the then you use the app? This no. Leo this has got to be built into the car, obviously. Oh, this is not goodness. just an app. Why would you get out of the this car, is, first of all? Don't you want to have oh, a foot no, on the no, brake? No, the reason they're showing it is because there's no room on either side to get out. Oh, right. oh look. Uh, she's using it like a remote control, so it's not even doing it automatically. She's controlling the car via the app. If you get there's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Oh, there's a lot of lawsuits waiting to happen with these things. Yeah. They explain how they do it, but you're they right. use there's... radar, ultrasonic, infrared, and vision sensor systems. So you're right. The car has to have yeah, the, the capabilities. Yeah, the car has all the com- well, they're a component okay. maker. For this is never going to fly. Industry. They're probably going to work with Ford. You should talk to your Ford guy and ask if they're working with Valeo. Well, have, yeah, Leo, I've well, heard Ford will do it. No, no. I, in fact, I was in a Ford uh, and Flex smashed up the place. Well, I did because, and that's why I wouldn't get out of the car. It turns out after you park, you're supposed to put your foot, you know, set the brake. And I didn't. And it was, of course, still idling, so it just kept going. And that's how you crash the car in Vegas. (laughs) It's kind of stupid. (laughs) I didn't do it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, Apple buys buys Chomp. Really? Who cares? Uh, I I think it's actually kind of a big story. Uh, You remember back this summer when Siri was uh, uh, the big deal? We all talked about search and, and, you know, Apple is... I mean, Siri is really the interface, but Chomp, I think, is going to be the guts. It's a recommendations engine. It was a third-party app that recommended apps, right? Yeah. And um, Apple... It's an app search engine. So what do you think they're going to do with this, Dan? Well, I think that this is. I really think that that Siri is the front end, but they need something that is smart. is not just an index, right? right? It's smart. It will organize things, and it will it will bring, it it will make the the, you know, however we surface things, it will make it more relevant in ways that aren't googly. You mm-hmm. know, that's interesting. It's like curating the app store. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, there's how many? Yep. There's half a million apps. You need something, right? That's, you know, Apple's the- definitely going to do search, right? I, I wrote an article in the fall why Apple's about to build, buy, or partner on a search engine. I mean, yeah. Siri is definitely the beginning of something big for them. You bet. Siri is yep. is, uh, is audible search, to use the word audible in a funny way, and then right after that is visual search. So there's so far 24,763,229,800 oh, – oh, 24,763,232,000. Wait, wait a minute, sorry. Like 24 billion. I can't keep up. I can't read. So this, sol- this solves two problems for them, right? The app, the app, um, the app discovery right. problem and the search intelligence. They need some more search brains in their organization now, right? So I, I think it's a pretty good acquisition. Do you think now yeah. Apple has this? Okay, so we're looking at this. I think clock. it's a fake. And first of all, yeah, right. It's not really counting. But the second thing is it says download the 25th billion app and you could win a $10,000 gift card. Do you think somebody's going to try to download the 25th billion app? Like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Wait, okay. Buy it! <laughs> what? It would be well, a team I wonder of people. If you could take like they do the, use the, in Vegas. Right. I was just gonna... That animation is going up at a, at a certain rate, right? Right. And, and I mean, that's an animation. Okay, we all know. But but it, it's got to be going up at a rate that is Yeah, it's close. reasonable. Right. right, right, reasonable. So some nerd out there is totally going to go. All right. You well, think we this? So you, you think actually that, that that this promotion sells apps? Like people are buying more apps so they can be the twenty fifth no. billionth? No, 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 no. It it affirms that that we it's have the biggest promotion. junk. Yeah. I mean, look at us. We we are bigger, stronger, and like all those Google guys. Yeah. Right. You think they got a store? We got a store. The real point of giving of somebody ten thousand dollars is so there'll be all those stories afterwards of the eight year old right. kid exactly. who bought a she, fish. Yep. Yeah, Eric will probably buy. It'll be your kid they, exactly some yeah. kid will do it or somebody who's the, the guy that always buys the lottery hey, tickets it's, it's your kid's birthday tickets. today you should give him a call out no it's his, her husband's it's birthday. birthday oh it's your oh it's, it's henry's birthday you came up here on henry's birthday aren't i rotten oh my god did you get him a cake give, give him do a call out I do say happy birthday, birthday henry happy birthday Flickr disables pinterest pins on copyrighted images that's an interesting I saw that. response to pinterest do you use pinterest john you seem like a scrapbooker yeah, don't I? Uh, I actually wrote Barbecue a column recipes. last week. You go check it out, PCMag.com. I wrote about Pinterest and what I thought about it. What do you think? What do you think? I think it's really a serious winner. 
Really? Yeah. I used it. With and I'll tell you why. Here's why. why. why? Because yeah. it's nonlinear. It has uh, you yeah. get it's a to- it really uses human rec- uh, you know recognition uh, pattern recognition to an extreme. It's not this blog style where th- first in last out last in first out. No, whatever. it's just like a. Thing. It's just a. It, and it reminds me of these. There's a bunch of websites very similar to this that you've seen that always show the guy with the big nose and some you know compelling headline. Man's giant nose explodes. And there's a whole bunch of these pictures. Have you ever seen these these websites? Anyway, they're all. And as soon as I think somebody saw that website, you know, we can make a, a user generated content site better than that. And that's it what does. This it is. is compelling. You do kind of want to just kind of scroll. scroll People get scroll. addicted to it. I, uh, I do. Too. Yeah, thought it was great. I don't look at it much. Is tw- uh, I you know every time I go there, I end up spending twenty minutes, and I come away with two to three like useful or or interesting. Um, things I've got to the point where I like I've stopped myself from going there sometimes because I always end up spending 20, yeah 30 it's minutes. a time killer it's yeah. the most it, it, modern I, of time killers it sucks. It's a time what sucks. what what uh, uh, cool. you know Twitter is to real time Pinterest is you know the Facebook equivalent you know there there isn't an edge rank system but Facebook really doesn't care about the real time they care about the quality and the right. stream and, and surfacing what's relevant to you I think Pinterest is kind of the same thing or, are or they using t- so this isn't chronological are they using some sort of algorithm to promote so this is people I follow isn't this just chronological or is there some sort of algorithm involved no, it's chronological. I think your feet it's, it is chronological. And if I go to popular, of yeah, course. Yeah, but it's not linear. It, you don't have one it thing. It isn't linear. It's not no, like right, G, right. That's, that's, G plus. Right. This is the G plus killer. There are already is three the adult Pinterests out yeah, there. Yeah, I think this the is the Google plus killer that people don't I think this is a Google plus killer? Things? That's my opinion, yes. Wow. The real winner is Cinterest. Yes, that's the sex one. Cinterest. Now <laughs> yeah, go to that. That's, that's the winner. <laughs> okay, don't show my screen. Don't show I'm not screen. Show John's screen. Show John's reaction to my screen. I don't have an account, so I hope. Well, it's going to load. It should be easy to stash great stuff with one hand. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, you can show my screen because they don't. uh, They don't actually yet show. I need a bit part. (laughs) I work for scale. It's Lent. I thought you were French. I'm giving up Cinterest for Lent. Going on. All right, moving on. Um, I think that's it. Anything? Any other big stories, Gina? You have a whole bunch of stuff on a new domain.net, and I don't know if we've hit everything. Oh, okay. We did. We mentioned the Google heads-up display glasses. Nah. The visual search. And the Would you buy displays. those? The glasses oh, you wear. Glasses. Not for consumers. It's, it's for goofy. Cops. That's a goofy it's story. For cops. That's when they pull you Terrible over. story. You think it's real? Oh yeah, it's real. Oh, I think it's real. I still think it's just ridiculous. It's just stupid. But yeah. Have you, um, it's real. Yeah. Version. Yeah. If you've it, seen, who's gonna? Yeah, who? It, you know what it reminds me of? Remember Microsoft did the smart watches a couple years ago? That's yes. what it reminds me. Right? And they, and they the spot watch, lab. the spot watch, spot watch. They yes. just turned off the spot server on January first. Yeah, the, these heads-up displays yeah. are going to be really vertically targeted. Do okay. I'm just curious. Do you wear a watch? Do you wear a watch, Jason? No, not anymore. Do you wear a watch? Never. Do you wear a watch? No, not today. Do you wear a watch, Dan? Only when I'm uh, backcountry, like nobody wears back, watches anymore, hiking. right? It's dead. Like watches, you are use dead. your phone. Somebody's going like that. I have a watch on, but you know that's just because I'm a fashion-forward, Pinteresting kind of guy. What does that no watch say? Is it a, a watch fake? It, is it a watch that says something? Oh, it's a. It's a. It's just a watch. It just. It doesn't. It's not even digital. It doesn't have the date. Nothing. It's just a watch. It's a dog. <laughs> it's not a dog. It's a watch. What's the WikiLeaks story? I wonder why nobody wears watches anymore. Is because it just they use you got, their phone you and you get really sure accurate iPhones. time. Okay, what's about yeah. WikiLeaks? Anything? Uh, well, WikiLeaks. There's a, there's a big WikiLeaks story. There's to always a WikiLeaks or, story. That's right. I was going to say, there's a, there's a story every day, guys, from WikiLeaks. What is the WikiLeaks story, chat yeah, room? Tell us, chat room. What is, is it more interested? WikiLeaks to publish security think tank emails. There it is. Reuters.com just published this story five minutes ago. That's how fresh. That's how fresh this is. The anti-secrecy group, secrecy group, WikiLeaks. Is that how we define WikiLeaks now? The anti-secrecy group. The anti-secrecy group. group. Uh, I remember that that one. Yeah. AP, or Reuters, said it would begin publishing more than five million emails tomorrow from a U.S.-based global security think tank, apparently uh, obtained by hackers. Right on time for Strategic Forecasting Incorporated, or Stratfor. Oh, that is, Stratfor is big, actually. Yeah. Uh, Austin, Texas, they are a subscription-based provider of, quote, geopolitical analysis. So it's a private spy firm, basically. Wow. That's what they do. So news writers for a new domain, get on that story. Right that's now. interesting. That, I don't know what it a, means. You probably have two people that work for them. Yeah, that's true. 
Stratfor's computers were hacked into at least twice in December. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a security again. firm, that's probably not great advertising. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to ask you, Jason Heiner, what you want to talk about. Jason Heiner, of course, is at TechRepublic.com. What's up to, yeah. uh, in your world? Um, I mean, we're, you know, rocking and rolling. Tech Republic's still doing all of uh, what it does as a, you know, trade publication and community for technology professionals. Um, you know, th you can also find me uh, on jasonheider.com. That's the place where you can find the link on Tech Republic. I do uh, a link to my newsletter that I do every day. I do a daily newsletter. Um, that goes out to over 100,000 um, of my closest friends in the tech industry, uh, of oh, where cool. I, I sort of pick my 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 picks for the uh, the top stories uh, of the day in tech. Um, so a lot of it's as it relates to, to business professionals, um, but you know I'm also picking in just stories that are are significant. So, Jason, uh, it looks like you're yeah. building a personal brand. It there. looks like he's a hipster. <laughs> are you a hipster? <laughs> what is it? The argyle sweater? The argyle is sweater and the hat. I know, I know. So it's funny if you actually go. I've got these. I've got these two. Um, these two photos. I had went to this other photo. Yeah, exactly. If you go there nice. and um, you go to the top thing there, you can see here's my other photo. Is the one in the suit. I posted that. I, I changed my photo just because I hadn't updated my photo in a couple no, of years. I put that up there. You look People like a Turkish pissed. terrorist. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't go not, to the airport. Do definitely Stay away. Not, do TSA not, warning. Do warning. not post I, I got, that. It was so weird. I got so much backlash against that photo. So I was Does like, that, right, no, you could get go. Good. You would be fit right in in Portland. Move there. It's fit right into Barcelona. <laughs> Portlandia. Oh, Portlandia. Oh, no, pulling up all the pictures. Yeah, you can click off of the pictures now. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Look at that one. I Whoa. like it. All you need is a Labrador retriever and you're set, dude. And Czech Republic I know. It's is like that looks like a a, um, a a gaff ad or something, right? <laughs> That's a little um, bit. And where'd you get the double box? I, you didn't have this on. Did you like that? I've you been like using that? the double box. You haven't been paying attention. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen the double That's box. Fancy. The double box, is, you look like you're Fox News or something. So all week long, box. we are going to be reporting. Uh, we will not be in Barcelona, but believe me, we we have we have spies there. We will be paying attention to Mobile World Congress, all about Android in particular, with uh, Jason Howell and uh, Eileen Rivera and Ron Richards. Uh, when are you going to do your MWC special? Uh, well, we're going to start tomorrow, actually. Right. Tomorrow night, uh, we'll have plenty 5 of PM coverage. Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you tune in for all about Android. And of course, TNT at uh, we at a new time. We've moved it to 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time because I was always late. So we just figured, well, the heck with it. It's at 3 p.m. anyway, so we might as well just do it then. It's a better time. It's a better time. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on twit.tv all week long for the uh, the news. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you especially to Dan Patterson. It's great to have you. John C. Dvorak. Thank Channel you. Dvorak. To uh, Gina, uh, I almost said Trapani, to Gina Smith from a new domain.net. And Tech Republic. And Tech Republic Hi. now. And of course, yes, Jason Heiner. Really, ChannelDevorak.com. Don't forget that. Yeah, Didn't I say that? I don't know. I think I did. Mm -hmm. ChannelDevorak. And John from a new do domain.net. Yeah, and he also writes for Gina. There's, we're all interlinked here. Doing video. We're all interlinked. We're all working for each other. There's only a few journalists right. left. Yeah. And you can come join us. <laughs> the chat room's already asking. How long before TNT starts at 3.30? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's funny. As I slowly push them down the clock. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next week. Another twit is in the can. God bless America. This is amazing. Nailed it. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to remind you about a letter um, that Archie had. I was going to read that. Was Shoot. During the show or just yeah, in Yeah, I shows? wanted to read that. I forgot. Well, we could insert it if you want. It's a really great Well, let me just read it now and you can decide. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll let you be the judge. Okay. Um, this was an email that we got. I thought it was actually, John, you might be interested in this. Kind of interesting. Right, well, I'll turn all the mics on. Is his name Archie? Or, or no, I got it, it from Eva. Eva sent it to me. Right. That's right. Hello from Khartoum. Mm -hmm. Hi there, writes Archie. I've been meaning to get in touch with a Twit Cottage for years, finally decided to do it. You don't have to read my words, but I'm happy to be writing them. I am Aki. It's, he says Aki or Achi, but his, his full name is Archibald. I've been listening to Twit since the early days, and it's been a constant source of information, smiles, and company during the years. Although I'm from England, I work internationally. You tell me what this guy does. I find myself in conflict zones from Beirut to Jaffna, Monrovia, to Gulu. I didn't really expect it. Bizarrely, I was an archaeologist for years. 
It's a long story. So anyway, I'm in some places that aren't the most genial in the world, but through it all, I've somehow managed to find an internet connection in a world strewn with the mess that people create and have downloaded as many twit netcasts as I can get my ears on. I've driven through tsunami destruction, barely awake after months of relief work, listening to early twits on an old HP laptop the size of a paving slab, and wondering how these war-ravaged people became part of a natural disaster. I've fallen asleep to John C.'s ranting, the only way to overpower the noise of the army bombing the LTTE in Sri Lanka as the rattle of AKs competed with tropical crickets. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I was in Liberia sneaking downloads from the work VSAT system and listening with the curtains closed and the outside world firmly outside so I could drift off to Petaluma and join friends I've never met, talking about tech I never saw but loved anyway. I was in Uganda just after the war, rebuilding that beautiful country and walking along the red-brown roads made vibrant with the light of Gulu City sunset, watching women carry water filled jerry cans on their heads and hearing the latest about Android on my iPod, smiling at the dichotomy of the modern world. I found my true love there, too. She'll be my wife in April. I now find myself in Khartoum, Sudan, trying as yeah. always. He must be, you know, I think he's in a, he must work for a relief organization, he's, right? No, he's with yeah, MI6. Yeah. He's the it's IT It's either guy. MI6 Secret, or is it? Secret yeah. Service. I now find no, myself in Khartoum, English. Sudan, trying as always to keep on believing the world will sort itself out and the little I do might give it a helping hand. And I'm still downloading, still listening, still falling asleep, thinking I'll get to visit one day, go see the brick house and say hello to that curmudgeon Dvorak and shake hands with Leo. It'll take me a while, but I'll get there. I can't wait. I wanted to share, to say hello and thank you. It's a strange world, and I feel happier you guys are in it doing what you do because sometimes it feels like you are doing it just for me. When a bad day comes and I want to go home to my friends, family, and more, and more, my love, you fill my head with your chat and keep me sane. I think he's confused about me in April. Take care, warm regards, much love, and keep on keeping on, Archie. Can you do me a favor? Drink a cold beer for me Sunday during the next twit. It's a dry country here, and I miss a cold one, you know, just once in a while. Nanite. Is that wild? When he comes here, we'll give him a Lagunitas IPA. Is that? I think he's a relief worker. You think he's a relief worker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would guess I think he's an IT. I'd love to meet this guy. I will be in Juba sometime this spring, and I'd I'd love to meet this guy. Archibald Kerr. Cool. K-E-R-R at yahoo.com. I would send him a note. You would send him a note for that? Yeah, and I will will send him a note. And you know what? I think we should just put this in at the end. Just I like this is something just after after the show ends and I say there's another tweet. Hey, by the way, here's a note uh, from uh, somebody who sent us an email and just wild. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Awesome. Blew my mind when I read that. I thought, wow, it's it's people. There's from something all now. There's somebody pointing out in the chat room. There's something suspicious about this note because he wants a cold one, but he's British. They only drink warm, warm beer. beer. No ice in England. Oh. It's a fake. That's, that's very funny. All right. Thank you, everybody.